What's this Ricky Mathis chump anyway? I don't know, but his fans sure seem to like him. He can't keep his lame pretty boy single on the shelf. at the same time, we'll totally stretch it out. No, Clover, I meant, aren't I your best friend too? Aww. Well, of course you are, silly. And that's why I'm gonna borrow your leopard print sandals tomorrow. <gasps> Clover, what is it? What's wrong? Yeah, what's with all the drool? I think, I think, I'm in love. Must find out who he is. Hi, I'm Clover. Is it me, or does Clover fall in love more often than Mandy maxes out her credit card? What do you say we go out after school? I'll even let you buy me a non-fat latte. You will? Okay. Sorry, Clover! <gasps> Damon's already got plans after school. He's going to the mall with yours truly. Oh yeah, that's right. Ma. Well, no big deal. I was only trying to do him a favor because he's new around here. Hmm. Clover! Don't worry, Clover. I'll buy you a non-fat latte after school. Besides, wouldn't you rather hang out with us than some dim-witted musician? Yeah, I guess so. I just can't help liking Damon. Call me crazy, but I just have this thing for musicians. I've got to find a way to get his attention off of Mandy and onto me. to drop in. Nice for some of us. Ricky Mathis? Never heard of him. And that's because he's an overnight musical sensation. In fact, as of today, he's only released one single, the optimistically titled Rock Legend. Which makes it even more unsettling that there have been reports of similar occurrences all around the globe. Something's up, we're just not sure what. So, where do we fit in? Your mission is to go undercover as the opening act on his world tour and find out exactly what it is about Ricky Mathis that makes his fans so... fanatical. You mean, we get to be in a real band? A real pretend one. This is so perfect! When Damon finds out, he'll toss Mandy like a day-old muffin and come running straight to me. He'll see me as his musical equal. I'll be irresistible! Now, all we need is a name. Actually, ladies, we've already taken care of your name. We're called the Spies? That is so lame. Yeah, totally unimaginative. It was my idea. Oh! <laughs> hey, look at these cool instruments. Now isn't the best time for you to <laughs> practice. Now, where were we? The drop is ready, sir. Oh, yes, the gear. This week you'll be utilizing the expandable cable bungee belt, the wind tunnel 3000 tornado blast hairdryer, the suction cup bottomed go go boot, the ultra sensitive eerie microphone, and my personal favorite, a potty. A whaty? No, no, not up whaty. Up whaty. Underwater power walking apparatus that's inconspicuous. Now, goodbye and good luck, ladies. Or as they say in showbiz, break a leg. This is popular. Wow. Wow. I can't wait to tell Damon about this. He'll be so impressed with me. Is that all she thinks about? Hello? Hi, Damon. It's Clover. Just that I called to see 
see what's happening stateside. I don't know what's going on stateside, but I'm hanging out at the mall. So what's up with you, Clover? Oh, oh the usual. <laughs> the band, the spies, is touring with Ricky Mathis. We're just hanging out at our extravagant and glamorous hotel in London right now. Whoa, you're on tour with Ricky Mathis? I had no idea you were even in a band. Oh, yeah. I'm quite an accomplished guitarist. <laughs> Wow, awesome. Hey, like maybe when you get back, we can get together and, you know, jam or something. I could probably squeeze you in next week. I'll let you know. Bye. You must be the spies. Spies? That's ridiculous. Who told you we were spies? Yes, that's us, the spies. We rock. Well, I am Phil Jenkins, the tour manager. Ricky's very anxious to meet you. What do you say we head up to the penthouse? Great song. Thanks. I just wrote it. We're scheduled to record Ricky's new song tomorrow morning. I'm sure it's going to be his next big hit. We're sure it will be, too. We're thrilled to be touring with such great musical talent. The feeling's mutual. I just adore your early work. We have early work? Hey, you guys should come to the recording studio and hang out. It'll be a blast. Uh, sorry, Ricky. Your recording sessions are strictly off limits. This sounds like fun. We'd love to go. Great. Uh, okay, everybody. We don't want to keep those hungry fans waiting. Oopsie. Hmm. That's weird. Since when do CDs glow? So, besides the fact that he has totally crazed fans and glowing CDs, Ricky seems pretty normal to me. Ow! Oh, well, here goes nothing. You ready, Clover? Clover? Clover, you are not supposed to be listening to music. You were supposed to be playing it. Besides, I took Ricky's CD for evidence. Too bad, because I totally dig it. It's really infectious. Nice job lip syncing. Took me forever to get it right. You lip sync, Ricky? I don't like to, but Phil insists that I don't sing live. I guess I can't argue with success. So much for the theory about Ricky being normal. The guy doesn't even sing. It's not the only thing that isn't normal. Check that out, girls. What do you say we go grab a spy's eye view? Good idea. Clover, you coming? Are you crazy? I've got a killer view right here. Everything is a go for tomorrow's recording session, and I've prepared the, uh, special lyrics. Unfortunately, Ricky invited those pesky spies to come in. We'll have to keep tight security. Huh? Oh, oh uh, hey, 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 girls, what's wrong? Uh, aren't you having fun? Hey! I think I've gone deaf! <laughs> Actually, the booth is, uh, soundproof. The noise night after night gives me a, a headache. I prefer just to watch. <laughs> Ricky's fans are nuts, his CDs glow, he doesn't sing, and his manager sits in a soundproof booth during his shows. Getting freaky. What do you think, Clover? I think Ricky was incredible. I mean, he's so talented. I could just listen to him all night. Must wow. tell Ricky. Okay, this is weird. Maybe we should check it out with Jerry? Hello, ladies. I hope rock stardom hasn't gone to your heads. It hasn't so far, but if we keep getting showered with roses, it might. Oh, those. They were sent by one Damon Reynolds. Hey, Clover! The flowers are for you! Damon sent them! Please. Now that I'm involved with Ricky, I'm like so over Damon. Oh, man. How deluded can you get? Not to mention Fickle. So anyway, Jerry, what can you tell us about a Mr. Sebastian? Hmm, it says here he's the owner of Ricky Mathis's record label. Apparently, he used to be quite a successful guitar player before he lost his arm in a freak pyrotechnics accident. Ah! Now 
Oh, he's an eccentric recluse producer who lives on a remote island off the coast of Brazuela. Ricky! So, who's ready to go to my recording studio in Brazuela? Wow! So I wonder what was up with that strange radio tower thing being strapped to the yacht. Well, Ricky says it's so they can broadcast the concert live. I don't buy it. Since when do you need guards to watch a satellite dish? This is definitely the creepiest recording studio I've ever seen. That was great, Ricky. Yeah, it was totally excellent. Uh, uh, now, why don't we lay down the lyrics? I'm Ricky and I'm your master. Follow me as I spread disaster. Take over the government, do as I say. I'll rule the world and you'll obey. Uh, Phil, I, I sort of didn't intend for the new song to be so... Aggressive? What happened to the lyrics I wrote? Ricky, trust me, I, I know what I'm doing. These new lyrics will give you a song that hip, edgy feel the kids are so wild about these days. Okay, I'd say those definitely fall under the special lyrics category. All the lyrics Ricky sings are special. <laughs> Maybe we should take this opportunity to do a little spying. I'm right behind you. I just love it when fashion has a purpose. Oh! <gasps> the secret laboratory's got to be around here somewhere. <gasps> nice work, Alex. Yeah, any time. <gasps> the new Ricky single is all finished. Excellent. The frequency has been successfully added. Good. Now let's see the effects firsthand. I take it the guy with the scary hook is Sebastian. And I take it he doesn't play guitar much these days. Have a seat. We want to know what you think of this new song. You're Ricky and you're my master. I'll follow you as you spread disaster. Take over the government, do as you say. You'll rule the world and I'll obey. You're dismissed. You're Ricky and you're my master. I'll follow you as you spread disaster. Did you see that? It's like, it's like Ricky's song hypnotized that guy or something. The frequency they were talking about must be some kind of subliminal mind control device. That would explain why Clover's been acting so crazy. Huh? Think about it. Ricky's first song, Rock Legend, is about rock star worship. And what does it do? It hypnotizes listeners into worshiping him. They do whatever the lyrics tell them to. So that means if Ricky performs at the concert, the fans will do whatever the lyrics say. Security, we have intruders. Ah! Run! Nice gadget. What was that, a portable high viscosity oil cannon? That was no gadget. That was my favorite moose. Expensive, too. Quick, we can scale down the wall. are really spies. How totally lame and unimaginative. Don't blame us. Jerry thought of it. <laughs> Unfortunately, you'll never have a chance to report what you've learned because in approximately 20 seconds, the only thing you'll be interested in will be the worshipping of Ricky Mathis. Which means that tonight you won't mind when I jam all the radio, TV, and internet signals around the globe. Nor will it bother you when I take control of the world with my newly hypnotized slaves, because you will be two of them. Enjoy your last moments of free will.
guys doing here? You're supposed to be out there playing. Well, we would be, except your good friends Phil and Sebastian decided to lock us in a recording booth and use a hypnotic version of your new song to try to turn us into zombies. Alex, fill him in. I gotta get to that radio tower. Now let's go watch the fireworks.
strangers. Neither. Apparently, we're goat babysitters. in exotic places. At least we can be psyched about our big snowboarding trip this weekend. Yeah. What do you say we forget about Jerry and his boring missions and focus on what is really important? Wow! for snowboarding. It's hardly any of your business. Now, bug off! I've noticed your grades have slipped, so I've arranged for you to be tutored by our top whoop scholar every day after school. No need to thank me, I'm just happy to help where I can. <sighs> okay, being a spy has just gone from mundane to ridiculous. We can't even get ready for our trip without Jerry bugging us. Tell me about it. That man is the absolute worst. We should definitely give him a piece of our minds. I totally agree. It's high time we put our feet down. <gasps> well, you know what they say. No time like the present. <laughs> okay, Jerry, enough is enough. That's right. We're sick of you butting into our personal lives. Yeah, and no more treating us like little girls. Do I make myself cl cl clear? Crystal clear. Hello, girls. I'm Max Smith, your new Whoop Guardian. You're our new guardian? W what happened to Jerry? Jerry decided after 35 wonderful years with Whoop that it was time he worked on his golf game. He's retired. It's true, ladies. I have indeed retired. I am, however, confident that I've left you in very capable hands. Max should prove to be a fine replacement. So, does this mean we're never going to see you again, Jer? Sorry, I can't help you. I'm retired. I can't believe Jerry retired. It seems like just yesterday he was invading our privacy and majorly getting on our nerves. Well, we'll have plenty of time to get acquainted later, girls. Right now, I need you to gather around, because I have a really important mission for you. Great. This guy's going to be a pain in the butt, just like Jerry. And the first thing you'll need for this mission is an official Whoop Platinum credit card. What did you just say? Platinum credit card? And that's right. Whoop gave me a couple of new cards this morning. Your first mission is to go shopping on the organization's dime. I know this fabulous new department store in Paris. Paris? But, but, but what about our gadgets? Jerry always gives us gadgets. Okay, here's the parasol crossbow, the backpack jetpack, the crime scene scanner watch, the tornado in a can of hairspray, and a tube of immobilizing stun tan lotion. Have fun. Ah! It's official. Max, the best. The total, ultimate coolest. You can say that again. But he's also so cool and smart. I'm gonna call Jerry to see what he might like for a retirement gift. Hey, Jer, it's Alex. Just wondering what you might like as a retirement... Sorry, I can't help you. I'm retired. Rude much? Don't worry about it. Yeah! Jerry's loss is totally our gain. Maybe I'll buy a gift for Mac. After all, a little generosity could go a long way. What the? Ah! <laughs> Oh, man, what a waste. Those were cashmere. Time 
for a little retaliation. purchasing power than I was looking for. We better get back to Whoop and tell Mac what happened. Nice suit. Whoa, back so soon? Yeah, we uh, had a little problem with the credit card. Not that we didn't totally appreciate you giving it to us. What? Was it decline or something? No, it attacked us with its whirling saw blades of death. We barely made it out of the store alive. Um, for you. Sorry I didn't have time to get it gift wrapped. Oh, you girls can't be serious. Unfortunately, we are serious. And so is the $200,000 bill for damages you'll be receiving from the department store. Doesn't it even bother you that we were almost shredded by a killer credit card? Alex, Mac is a seasoned agent. He's probably been in so many dangerous situations, stuff like this doesn't even phase him. Girls, I apologize. You've got to let me make this up to you. How about a cliff diving adventure in Acapulco? I think we've had enough international excitement for one day. Well, then the least I can do is offer you a ride home in style. Take my brand new Turbo Titan 3000 XT. Just bought it yesterday. Still has that new car smell. Wow. <laughs> well, if you insist. Question of function, Alex. It's a question of fashion. Whoa! Whoa, I guess this car really is the bomb. I wonder what could have caused this. I think the question is who could have caused this. Huh? Bingo! What is it? A fingerprint. A fingerprint that belongs to a criminal named Tim Scam. Man, his rap sheet's longer than Clover's list of past boyfriends. Well, almost. Uh-oh. We should warn Mac. I mean, first the evil credit card, and now this. I think this Tim guy's after him. Huh, there's no answer. Then I guess we better get to Whoop and warn him. And how exactly are we gonna do that? Yeah, in case you forgot, our ride exploded. Well, if we can't drive, huh? let's fly. Yeah! Where could he be? I don't know, but we should at least leave him a note. That says what? Mac, FYI, in addition to turning your credit card into a whirling blade of death, some psycho also blew your car into a billion pieces of scrap metal. By the way, let's do lunch. drawing of the evapoblaster and a file on Tim Scam. That's weird. Why would Mac have those? Unless he knows that Tim Scam is after him. Wait a second. This is a Whoop employee file. That's impossible. That would mean that Tim Scam used to work at Whoop. According to these records, he was a Whoop weapons technician 20 years ago. But it says here he was fired for illegal use of Whoop technology. What a creep! We better call Jerry. I'm sure he remembers Tim Scam. After all, he worked here for like 90 years. Jerry, you've got to help us. There's a crazy- Sorry, I can't help you. I'm retired. Trey uncouth. I mean, I don't care if he is retired. This is an emergency. Wait a second. Sorry, I can't help you. I'm retired. I knew it. This isn't live. This is on a tape loop. A tape loop? Now why would Jerry do that? He wouldn't, but someone else might. Someone like Tim Scam! Hold it right there. Ah! It's him! Maybe we could use something in here to give him the slip. Yeah. 
someone outfit the Evapo Blaster with a missile guidance system. We're so happy it's you and not that crazy Tim Scam! Yeah! He's been chasing us all over Whoop, and he's after you too! Hmm. By the way, do you girls still have your stun tan lotion on you? Sure. So, what are we going to do about Tim Scam? Hey, did you know that your name backwards spells Tim Scam? Whoa, that is a weird coincidence. You're Tim Scam! <laughs> You're all right. I was so worried that Tim Scam got to you. <gasps> what? Not so fast. <laughs> uh, call emergency. I need a deep tissue massage right this second. Make it two. Hey, where's that jerk, Max Smith or Tim Scam or whatever his name is? Forget about that jerk. Where are we? <gasps> Try to relax and enjoy the ride, girls. Why did you bring us out here? And what do you plan to do with that? Why, I'm going to use it to evaporate the entire Earth's water from the safety of my spaceship. I gotta say, even for a complete psycho like you, that's still a really crazy idea. Thank you. We read your Whoop file. We know all about your criminal past. Whoop never did appreciate me for the genius that I am. Drop the money! We've got, got you surrounded! I can't believe I actually thought you were cool. You seem so smart. Now I see you're just another immature, run-of-the-mill terrorist. We're like so over. Yeah, and you can just forget about your crazy little plan because you're going to have to deal with us first. Okay, you're dealt with. Oh, and while you're out there, tell Jerry I said hello. so we could take Jerry's place and gain access to Whoop. We've got to get to Jerry before he runs out of oxygen. But how are we supposed to get over to him? Wait, I've got it. Great idea. What's your idea? I'm gonna use the tornado in a can to give us a little kick. <laughs> Oops, <laughs> I guess I had the can turned the wrong way. Now take us back to the mothership. <laughs> it's a good thing there's no gravity out here or Jerry would be out of luck. Come on, Jerry. You've got at least a couple more years in you. Jerry's gonna be just fine. Come on!
could he be? Judging by that floating ocean out there, I'd say he can't be far. We've got to find the Evapoblaster and send that water back to Earth. <gasps> I've got your Evapoblaster right here. <laughs> Terrific! The one day I forget my moisturizer! Hey! I think this was your best weapon ever. You look like you could use some liquid refreshment. Thanks so much for saving us, Jerry. Yeah, I always feel bad for calling you a boring old goat. You called me a what? No time to explain. We gotta get that water back to Earth. Let me out of here! So, we missed our snowboarding trip, but at least we saved the world. And we saved Jerry. I never thought I'd admit it, but I was really starting to miss that old goat. I mean, <laughs> mature guy. Good evening, ladies. Just wanted to stop by and officially thank you for saving my life. Don't sweat it. After all, you saved our lives, too. Still, I did want to properly show my appreciation, and so I'm sending you on a surprise ski trip to St. Moritz. Wow, thanks! Great! Cool! But first, I have a mission for you girls. I need you to train the entire Whoop Canine Division. That is, of course, after you do your homework and clean your rooms, and I've got some filing I need to have done. No! Not again! Jerry! <laughs> Blindfold. Why, hello, Rick. So good to see you. Hey, Clover. How would you love to give me a ride home? I can't. Gotta go to the mall. Nice skirt. Hey, where'd you get that? <laughs> I gotta get my kid sister a birthday present today. <laughs> kid sister? I bet his kid sister wouldn't wear something like this. My mom wouldn't wear something like that. Maybe you should just be yourself, Clover. Be myself? Hello, Rick's a senior. As in he's used to sophisticated women. Yeah, but if a person doesn't like you for who you are. You guys, we're in the spy business. Reinventing ourselves is what we do. <laughs> <laughs> Girls, we have a worldwide problem on our hands. Vital members of society have stopped doing their jobs. They're only interested in playing toys. Toys? You're kidding, right? Unfortunately, I'm quite serious. Whoa! This chaos will turn into pandemonium unless we nip it in the bud. And so, your mission is to go undercover as buyers. Finally! A mission I can relate to. As we speak, there's a toy fair going on in Taiwan. Perhaps you can find a clue there as to who's behind this bizarre phenomenon. I have assembled some gadgets for you. There's the Magna Belt. Huh? Yeah, that's a little too Elvis for me. 
The TAD, or tracking accessory device, it can be activated by your compounders. Infrared heat detector glasses. The manicure kit with press-on sticky fingers and laser nail file. Oh, does it have cherry blossom red in it? And electric blue. Perfect. Ah! And lastly, the ejector bead bracelet. Oh, careful with that one, it's still in development. By the way, I like your new look, Lola. Very sophisticated. My mother has a suit just like it. Ladies. Thanks! We hear your toys are all the rage. What my associate means to articulate is, is that we've uh, observed a positive reaction to your toy line. Yeah, they're all the rage. I've never heard of Vladimir Kozirev before. Are his toys in stores yet? No, we're a brand new company. This is our big debut. I see. Why don't you take some toys, ladies? Hey! Go on, open them. You'll see their appeal instantly. Really. Maybe later. Right now we need to make a phone call. <laughs> while we're waiting to hear from Jerry. Better yet, let's go over how I'm going to impress Rick while we're stuck in stupid Taiwan. Taiwan's not stupid, Clover. It's exotic and interesting. Good angle. Why did I think of that? Hi, Rick. It's Clover. Oh, nothing much. I'm just calling from exotic and interesting Taiwan. Oh, that was fast. Huh? Jerry says there's no record of a Vladimir Kozirev company anywhere. Hey. Well, somebody has to be making these toys. <laughs> Sam, are you okay? <laughs> <gasps> Rick, I'm going to have to call you back. This is so sixth grade. Yeah, Sammy, cut it out. Make me. Lady, or you're going to your room, huh? <sighs> we better tell Jerry what's going on. Hi, Jerry. Oh, look, everyone, it's Clover. Red <laughs> Rover, Red Rover, say Clover Rover. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no, not Jerry, too. We have to figure out.
out what's up with these toys before Jerry and Sam and everyone else are stuck like this forever. inside. Play. 
that every day. Me first, me first. I spy with my little eyes something You're good. I bet that beam has something to do with everyone acting like kids. We just have to figure out what the computer chip is and reprogram it. I can't log on. Password's usually obvious, because they think no one will go for the obvious. Toys. Little Anne? Obviously he doesn't know the rules. Now what? Huh? Works for me. <laughs> At least it'll slow him down while we... We have intruders! Revenge, of course. Children who once adored my little Anne have grown up and forgotten the joy, the simplicity. They're only interested in high-tech gizmos and silly electronic toys. Uh, dude, I think she was talking about the outfit. Totally. Now, about this whole revenge thing, it won't bring back the little Anne. Of course it will. Adults across the world will be forced to remember the joy of the little Anne as soon as I regress them to the children they once were. Please, oh, please, oh, please, oh, please, can I go with you, please? Now, why can't you have an attitude like that? Up aboard, my little elf. No, Sam, Simon says no. You'll never get away with this!
more than usual. <sighs> Hi, Rick. I have two tickets to the opera. Would you care to join me? Opera? <laughs> Clover, what happened? You look like my mom now. Hey, Rick. Are we still going to the street fair tonight? Sure, Mandy. <laughs> nice outfit. PTA meeting. <laughs> Excuse me, Professor. Could you tell me where the administration office is? Being mature is so She's good. Very good. Sure. Saturday night would be perfect, Jason. Cool. I'll pick you up at eight. Did you see that? I just got a date with Jason Roberts. Mandy's going to so hate me. She's been wanting to go out with him for like... Problem. That was just the million dollar prototype for our new billion dollar surveillance satellite. Ooh. Spies, I've called you here because I've got an important assignment for you. Famous landmarks from around the world are being stolen. How does someone steal a landmark? Aren't they big and kind of connected to the ground? Well, our perpetrator has found a way to shrink them, then suck them up into the sky. We've acquired some video taken by tourists who have witnessed his events. <laughs> to east, so according to whoop calculations, the Taj Mahal is the next target. Cool, we get to go to Mexico. Uh, India. Yes, and <gasps> we'll be posing as diplomats. Here are your papers, credentials, and native costumes. Now, for your gadgets. Wow. Today's specials include an all-in-one lipstick and titanium extender rod. Uh, I look horrible in pinks. A locator deactivator rhinestone headband. Turbo fuel jetpack backpacks. Telescopic Optic 2000 sunglasses with built-in cam, a laser cutter eyelash curler, and a cab bag. Is that one of those fruit-flavored snacks? No, it's a climb anything dirt bike that's protein powered. What? Uh, one thing, Jer, how long do you think this mission will take? I can be sure, actually. As long as it takes for you to find and stop whoever is behind this. Well, you see, I've got this date Saturday night, so it would be better for me if we could just... <laughs> Wow, that is amazing. It's even bigger than some of the houses in Beverly Hills. I don't understand why you had to lug all your clothes with you. Fashion crisis. I need to pick out what to wear on my date. Number one rule in dating, the outfit is everything. Wait, isn't that the number one rule in life? Uh-oh, 
seems like Jerry overlooked one little detail. How are we going to get in? We're diplomats, remember? We have papers and credentials. Huh? Huh? It closed for renovations. No one gets in. What do we do now? I'm thinking... Four days till Jason. Can you think a little faster? Yeah! Who's up for climbing? <laughs> oh. uh, how do girls move in these things? Don't worry. I can fix this. You know, since short is last year's long, I'm thinking we market these things and make a killing. Let's do what we do best. Cool. Point me toward the gift shop. Place looks clean. I'm contacting Jerry and telling him that Whoop's calculations are wrong. Wait, what's this? It's either a tracking device or a way cool mood ring. Let me see. away from us, if you know what we mean. But we recovered this tracking device. And to catch whoever's behind this, we need you to see if its frequency matches any other frequencies of tracking devices elsewhere in the world. Let's see. Uh-huh. Yes. Yes, I'm picking up a faint signal near the Great Wall. Looks like we're Peru-bound. Uh, try China? Help me find an outfit for my date. This locator should find the tracking device, no problem. Aha! Uh -huh. Here it is. Now let's deactivate it. Like I said, let's deactivate it. Let me try.
analysis of the strange purple substance on Clover's pants reveals this could only be the work of one man, Diminutive Smalls. Diminutive who? Smalls. Years ago, he was a whoop scientist working on a formula to increase strength by reducing mass. There was a freak accident. He and his two siblings got shrunk by his own machine but gained incredible strength. It seems Diminutive has now perfected the shrinking process and wants revenge. If only he'd gotten a little therapy, then the whole world wouldn't be in this mess. We've been picking up an unusual level of radiation from a small island in the South China Sea called Jarnesia. Our experts believe he may have set up camp there. That's probably the island they were talking about. We'll check it out right away. He's dangerous, so be careful, spies. Hey, what about me? Yes, we're already working on an antidote for you, Clover. Good, because you see, in two days, I've got this date with this guy named Jason who... I know, I know. But did I tell you about the dimple he's got right in the middle of... Oh, so sorry, I, I think we're breaking up. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> decorate my island, I'm going to shrink and steal the cities of the world, people and all, so I can have subjects to rule over. Listen, pal, you're never going to get away with this. Oh, like you're going to stop me. All right, let's turn her into an ant. <laughs> the other two. Gotcha. I said I'll tackle the annoying one. I know, so why are you going after that one? She's the annoying one. Not half as annoying as that one. <laughs> now, 
when this machine gets nice and toasty, you girls will be shrunk to the size of dust particles. Too bad we won't be able to watch, but we've got a little city to shrink and steal called Tokyo. Maybe you've heard of it. <laughs> now what? I can't reach my gadgets. Look, my laser cutter eyelash curler shrunk along with me. This whole time, I could have had great lashes and didn't know it. Strap on your jetpack backpacks and let's blow this joint. Wait up! There they are, and they're almost ready to go. Maybe we can destroy the blimp's steering system so Smalls can't hold it in position. How did those annoying little pests get free? That's it. Hand me the portable Alpha X9. Watch out! I think he sees us! This is for, uh... Me? Yeah. Uh, okay, guys, quick, quick. Shoot me with a gun. Then I'll have just enough time before Jason shows up to change out of this awful doll outfit and into my special date outfit. Let me do it. No, let me. can't see me like this. What am I gonna do? <gasps> cancel. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to have you go to the door and cancel my date. Tell him I'm sick, that I have the flu, and we'll have to reschedule. Are you sure? I mean, you could borrow something of ours. No way, girls. I've been planning my perfect outfit all week. Hi, Jason. Hi, girls. Is Clover ready? She's very sick. Spots everywhere. She's sorry, but she cannot go out with you today. That was close. Oops. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, uh, hey, Mandy. What's going on? <gasps> How totally lame. He's actually falling for that? 
Superstar player of Bev High Basketball asks yours truly on a huh? date. You know he only dates tall women. Should have known this was about a boy. <laughs> giant woman. Good morning, ladies. I trust you found the tram ride enjoyable. Oh, yeah. My eyeballs needed a good blow dry. Yesterday afternoon, the luxury cruise liner Juliet disappeared in the Mediterranean Sea with 200 passengers on board. It vanished from radar, a complete mystery. And it's our job to solve that mystery and find the missing passengers? Precisely. Now, let's have a look at the gadgets, shall we? Aqualypse waterproof lipstick doubles as state-of-the-art scuba gear, Scanman 9000 portable radio and radar scanner, Ice Queen perfume, actually a contemplated freezing agent, perfect for cooling off a hot date, or stopping an attacker in their tracks. Next, we have Cyberjacker sunglasses that automatically hack into any computer system. And finally, you'll be getting a brand new rash. A rash? But my makeup's hypoallergenic. R-A-S-H, clever. Rocket-powered amphibious stealth hydrofoil, which you can remote control with this diamond ring. Oh, wow. So here's the ring. Where's the boat? They're sitting in it. Investigation there and Clover. Yeah, Jer. Would you please take off those ridiculous shoes? <laughs> <laughs> Right, Sam. There's no sign of a cruise ship on the radar. But freaky, there's an island nearby that's not on the map. Not on the map? I bet it's an exclusive tropical spot. We should definitely check it out. Or we could just stay here and enjoy the jacuzzi.
tissues may be used as a flotation device. The question is, what caused the whirlpool? <laughs> I'm not used to visitors on my island. I'm a fisherman. Name's Trode. Oh, we're looking for a missing cruise ship, and there's a tunnel leading from the crime scene to your island. You haven't seen like 200 people wandering around in Hawaiian shirts looking kind of lost, have you? We're afraid not, and that tunnel is just an abandoned oil pipeline. I'm sorry, ladies, but your missing ship isn't here. Well, thanks anyway, Mr. Trode. Uh, mind if we have a look around before we go? Suit yourself. We've got company. And get rid of them. Whoa! What kind of creature leaves a print like that? I don't know. But I bet the wolf computer does. Hey, Jerry! No missing passengers yet, but we found this freaky footprint. I'm sending a scan for computer analysis. And in just one moment, I'll tell you. Oh, that's odd. The print doesn't belong to any known species of animal. <laughs> Ew! Bug! Well, other than a weird little fisherman and some unknown species of animal, I'd say this island's deserted. One thing's for sure, there's no spa. Looks like you need a little spa treatment. Those eyebrows are looking pretty bushy, girl. Whoa! When's the last time you waxed? What are you talking about? <laughs> of music soothed the savage beast. But they looked almost human. What kind of beasts were they? Hmm. The kind that wear cheap jewelry? <gasps> That's the Juliet Cruise Line's logo. Must have belonged to a member of the crew. Ah! You know, I think those freak shows may be the passengers. <gasps> That's impossible. How could... <gasps> Clover! Okay, I need to wax. I get it. Whatever happened to those passengers is happening to me. <laughs> but how? And how come it's only affecting Clover? Uh -huh. Ew! Bug! The bug bite! What kind of stupid bug bite turns people into poorly groomed weirdos? This kind. A dart thingy? Ew! It was nasty enough when I thought it was just a bug. Since we're on his island, I'm guessing uh -huh. that Trode guy's the one who fired it. Then let's hurry up and kick his butt! I mean, look what his freak serum did to my new shoes! There is a 
tropical spa. See, my spa sense never lies. It looks like it's been abandoned for years. If it's so abandoned, what's with the electric fence? It's getting cold out here. Wanna go inside and do a little spy? Spoken like a true ice queen. Spa needs a decorator because I'm not getting that soothing and natural vibe. Whatever this guy's up to, it is not good. <laughs> Whatever he's up to, it's probably on his hard drive. Whoa. The serum re engineers Homo sapien DNA to include genetic patterns from outside the species. And that means the bad guys are making half human animals. But why? Shortage of new exhibits at the local zoo? Guys, I'm hungry. How about we talk about this over a tasty saucer of milk? I already infected this. <laughs> Company! The other two will be next. <gasps> That's Helga von Guggen, the famous fashion designer. She's the one behind this? No way. She must be Fishman's hostage. No icon of the fashion industry could ever commit a crime. One isn't good enough, Trode. Those spies are a danger to my plans. I didn't go to the trouble of engineering a mutation formula and transforming a boatload of people simply for my own amusement. Why did she do it? What's wrong? I'm allergic to cats. Sorry. What? Capture the intruders. Take your best shot. Good shot. Me? Ow! You'll never get away with this! Yeah! By the way, what exactly are you trying to get away with? Since you're about to be part of my experiment, I suppose I can tell you. Furlings. My hybrid creations will become the world's first form-fitting, Seamless fur coats made without a single stitch. Ew! Gross! It won't seem gross when my fabulous fur line has made me insanely rich. Like it? It's genuine lawyer. You're gonna need that lawyer when we get finished with you! Au contraire, it is I who will be finished with you. Soften you up. Pro will add the syrup. Since we're short on time, you'll be getting an overdose. If you survive the transformation, you can join your friends here at my processing factory in Milan. Processing? Fully automated. I need 200 coats in time for next week's fashion show, so I can make millions fast. <laughs> By the way, if everything goes well, Three are going to be the centerpiece of my new fall line. We gotta get out of here. I do not want to wind up an accessory. Speaking of accessories, yours is blinding me. The rash. Never thought I'd be glad to have one of those. See anything? We must be out of range. But if the passengers came to this island through that whirlpool, then so did our boat. So if I can rewire the transceiver to extend its range...
I'm using Helga's research to engineer an anti serum. We have to get this to Helga and the passengers, so we can turn them back into people before Helga turns them into fashion statements. Pretty kitty, I promise you'll be the first in line. Is this part of the 
the tour? It's never been on my itinerary before. <laughs> exhibition at school and I really want to show my best work. Oh, I didn't know you like art exhibitions too. I love exhibitions, especially the arty kind. Well, I came here hoping to find inspiration. <gasps> you know, if I could just find something or someone whose look says it all. <sighs> like what a coincidence. I just happen to have that very look. Clover, shouldn't you be out raising money for your hair disaster relief fund? Mandy, what an unpleasant surprise. <laughs> Although I'd love to continue lobbing slams, I heard David needs a model, and I, Mandy, am perfect model material. Chaw! Apparently, you missed the part where he said I'm modeling for him. But... Well? You know, I appreciate the offers, really. But maybe I should figure out exactly what I need first. I wouldn't want to waste your time. You can waste my time anytime. Secret artist. No wonder he keeps it a secret. Now, about your next mission. As you can see by the red highlighted regions, we're experiencing potentially destructive atmospheric phenomena over Russia and Mexico. Maybe we should check out Mexico. I'm owed some decent nachos. Personally, I don't care where we go, as long as it's a place where women have a look. Well, if this look you're talking about involves babushkas, you'll have your wish. <gasps> you're sending us to Hawaii? Uh, yet? We're going to Russia. Duh. But rest assured, you'll be fully stocked with innovative yet slightly devious devices. Behold the icy fresh liquid nitrogen breath spray, the wind tunnel 3000 tornado blast hair dryer, a pair of M-ray contact lenses, an XYZ, that's an X-ray youth zoom decator, and your all favorite, the Upwatty. Underwater power walking apparatus is inconspicuous. Duh, Jerry. Congratulations, you all get an A. And an XYZ. And don't forget the ever important TTFN. TTFN? Ta-ta for now. <laughs> I can't believe they fell for that one. I guess Jerry forgot to mention the part about freezing our butts off. <laughs> oh, come on. I was hoping to find a look. The only look anything around here could inspire would be a makeover. Nice huh? to finally meet you. I'm Bob. I was told to meet you here. 
put these on. They're laser bands, and they'll protect your eyes from the powerful rays. Guess Jerry forgot to mention that, too. Okay, so you know about us, but how do we know we can trust you? Like, is your name really Bob? Bob? Hmm, like you girls, I'm also a Whoop agent. And Bob is actually my codename for Brains Over Brawn. Oh, I'd choose Brains any day. Yes, well, whatever substance is burning that hole up in the clouds has me completely stumped. Maybe I can help. Whoops, and then take the reverse switch. Turn it on. I didn't, but I better get an air sample fast. I'll just digitally transmit the sample to Jerry. We should have your answer in no time. <gasps> hey, maybe that's what David wants. Uniqueness. And with one of those cute furry hats, he'll beg me to pose. <gasps> Super tone sunblock. Freaky. I saw a hat for that stuff on the beach in L.A. I may be hot, but I won't get burned. A lot of these users, I use Supertone Sunblock. Yeah, what is it, Jer? Apparently, the volume of chemicals floating in the sky above you, Clove. What do you think's causing it? By the high level of radioactivity, we can only assume it's the... Effects of some sort of solar-powered atmospheric laser. Precisely, Sam. All we know is that the laser appears to be generating most of its strength from the Alaskan shoreline, a place you girls should investigate next. A whoop missile will pick you up momentarily. Uh. Ladies, keep those laser bands and keep in touch! before it blows a bigger hole in the clouds and we all burn up, literally. Okay, okay, we're looking, we're looking. There we go, there Yeah, and whoever came up with that Sunblock 10,000 couldn't have picked a better time. Yeah, just when all this weird weather phenomenon is happening. You're right, Alex. The timing is too perfect. Alex, what's the exact temp? 110. Uh, 20. No, 30. Maybe we should snag a bottle before it's too late.
Zapwati time. Do you think David would be inspired by my new alien space check look? Something tells me that's not the look he was talking about. off my ship. Permanently. <gasps> hey! <laughs> Yoo-hoo! If we're going out to sea, we'll need those rowing sticks. If I were you, I'd be more concerned about that hole in your boat. There's no hole in this boat. You're right. There's two holes. <laughs> <laughs> Um, could you tell the chef I'm a vegetarian? It's not for you, it's for the sharks. Hello, two skimpy steaks won't fill up a great big shark. No, but two skimpy steaks and three nosy spies might do the trick. Second, I 
are ghosts coming our way. Uh, I don't like ghosts. It's attractive boneheads like you that give attractive geniuses like me a bad name. No, get rid of them for good! It's art. Thanks for understanding. Speaking of love, 
There's a boy who talks my language. Clover, sometimes I get the impression that when David's around, you completely ignore Sam and me. Hi, David. Hey, Clover. So, did you write your poem? Hi, David. <laughs> so, like I was saying, did you write a poem yet for lit class? Oh, yeah, I did, but I'm kind of afraid to hand it in. I'm just not sure if it's good enough. I love poetry and all, but I'm so afraid of rejection. Really? What a coincidence! I love poetry, and I'm totally afraid of rejection, too. Then you must be afraid all the time. Hey, maybe after you write your poem, we could get together and give each other constructive criticism. Kind of like a study date. <gasps> Did you say d -d date See you Saturday night. Toodles, Mandy. I'll let you know how our date turns out. Oh, oh! A poetry date? Don't bother. Sounds about as thrilling as watching nail polish dry. Oh! <laughs> so, what were you saying, Alice? Just that every time David's around, you completely ignore her. Oh, that reminds me. I better call my personal shopper and tell her to find the perfect outfit for my date with David. Evil cell phone battery, how can you betray me at a time like this? Come on. Huh? May I? Whoa! He'll call you back. Okay, now, how do you even use one of these things? Just put a quarter in the... Ah! I don't have time to get whooped right now! I have an urgent call to make! learn how to use a payphone. Hello, girls. Hi, Hi Jerry. Jerry. Jer, can't you use other whoop agents? I have a date with David and... No time, Clover. I need you girls to investigate a series of mysterious and violent abductions. Fortunately, one intended victim managed to escape an attack in his own home. And you want us to pay that person a visit? Correct. Oh, and before I forget... You are cordially invited to the annual Whoop Company picnic to be held at the Beijing Zoo. <gasps> Sounds fun! Hmm, I wonder if it's too tacky to wear a leopard skin skirt. As long as it's fake, I don't think the leopards will mind. By the way, attendance to the picnic is mandatory. Ah! In that case, I'll RSVP now. Me too. This totally reeks. The picnic is the same day as my date with David. There, there. Boys come and go, but a Whoop is forever. Now, here are your gadgets. Tortoise shell magnifying shades, faux snakeskin parachute purse, net blaster mascara brush, scanner watch, and the Noggerhide biker chic lasso belt. Oh, this'll go great with my new pants. <laughs> According to Whoop, the man is a zoologist named Jacob. Huh? Ew, look at these nasty scratch marks. Maybe Jacob should manicure his fingernails. Fingernails? More like claws. Who... who is it? We're here to investigate your attack. Uh, sorry about that. After the attack, I just can't take any chances. Do you have any idea who would have wanted to attack you? Well, I don't have any enemies to speak of. Everyone likes me. I'm usually the life of the party. Remind me to skip that party. One thing's for sure, though. The person who attacked was cold and heartless. He wore a fur coat made from a very rare South American polar bear. Heartless huh? and unfashionable. Fur is so out. Do you mind if we come in and look around? Sure, no problem. I'll make us some tea. It's about the only thing that calms my nerves these days. So, did you tell David you have to call off the date yet? No, and I'm really dreading it. I know how sensitive he is about rejection. Oh well, here goes nothing. Hi, David, it's Clover. Listen, there's something I need to tell you. Hey, Clover, check out this poem I wrote about our date. You wrote a poem about our date? Clover, Clover, you are perfection. I can't wait for our date. <laughs> I hate rejection. <laughs> so, let me hear one of your poems. Oh, uh, you know what, David? Um, I'm going through the canyon. I'm losing you. <laughs> huh? Could this day possibly get any worse? He's gone. Who, or should I say what, abducted him? Poor Jacob. All that's left of him is his shoe. This might actually tell us something. I'll check it out with the tortoiseshell magnifying shades. Hey, there's a blind. 
blonde hair on it. Let's run it through the scanner watch. It's a hair from the same rare polar bear Jacob was talking about. So it must have been the same person who attacked Jacob the last time, because they're still wearing the same coat. Judging from the damage to that wall, I'd say it was the bear itself. Hello? We're in the middle of a city. Last I knew polar bears lived in the snow. Let's call Jerry to see if there are any polar bears in captivity around here. Hello, girls. Hi, Jer. Do you have any record of South American polar bears in captivity? Let's see. Oh, yes, there was one. But it recently escaped. And oddly, it was at the Beijing Zoo, the same place we're having our company picnic. Which reminds me, do you think we should serve potato salad or ambrosia at the picnic? <sighs> Neither. Thanks, Jer. Gotta run. But, but I... I got it, I got it. If I tell David our date is off in a poem, he won't take it so hard. What rhymes with, I'm dumping you? Uh, merci beaucoup. Can you forget about your poem? We've got to get to the bottom of this case. Oh, my new volunteers. I'm glad you're here. Three of my most reliable staff members haven't shown up for work at all this week. That's weird. All the people who are missing seem to be animal workers. We're glad to be able to help. Did you see that? He offered me the ball all by himself. Good monkey. Actually, Sherman is a gorilla. They're a lot smarter than we give them credit for. Now, would you girls mind cleaning the polar bear and condor cages? Neither have been tended to huh? since the animals went missing last week. Maybe this is why the employees stopped showing up for work. There's no sign of forced entry or exit, and no sign of foul play. Maybe it was an inside job. Here you go, Sherman. This should go a lot further than a bunch of bananas. Hey! What are you doing? so quick to congratulate yourself. I'm far too intelligent to fall prey to your foolish little gadget. <gasps> Ta-ta, ladies. I'll see myself out. Okay, that was really unexpected. Huh? Now who's the intelligent one? I do not have time for your shenanigans. <laughs> or that gorilla just drove off in a car with Alex. I hope he's a better driver than she is. This is crazy. One second, a man was holding this device to Sherman's head. The next, Sherman was behaving with human dexterity. I wonder if this thing is responsible for the way Sherman was acting. Okay, I want to know who's responsible for that ape slobbering all over me. <sighs> if he can drive, he can certainly pay the dry cleaning bill. I better hurry back inside and make sure the rest of the animals are secure. And we better contact the authorities about Alex. Sam, I know you're really into recycling, but if you need a tissue, just ask. Let's run this through the scanner watch. Maybe we'll get a clue from Sherman's saliva. Look, it says Sherman's DNA is half human, half simian. Weird. Let's check it out with Jerry. Hello, girls. What do you think of coleslaw as a side dish? I think we have more important issues than side dishes. A talking, driving gorilla just kidnapped Alex. Yeah, we just sent you a very strange DNA sample. Well, I see what you mean by strange. The human half of the DNA belongs to a zoologist. I don't know who the gorilla half belongs to. Jer, do you have an address for the zoologist? I've just forwarded it to your compounder. And girls, need I remind you that I want Alex safely returned and all of this figured out quickly. You need not remind us, Jerry. Okay, let's pay a visit to the zoologist and see why his DNA is in Sherman's bed. I hope Alex is okay. You don't think Sherman would hurt her, do you? Clover, hello? Sorry. Talking with Jer about the picnic reminded me that I still have
have to cancel on David. Just tell him you have to reschedule. That way he won't feel rejected and you still get to go out with him. Reschedule, of course. And if I tell him in a rhyme, he probably won't mind. Hello, hello. I hope you're not feeling low. David here. Hi, David. It's Clover. I have something important to tell you before this call is over. Sorry, but I can't keep our date. Can I move it to next Friday so I won't be late? Wow, you are a good poet. Unfortunately, I can't make it next Friday. I've got a date with Mandy that night. <laughs> with Mandy? <laughs> Never mind. Saturday's just dandy. <laughs> from escaping the zoo. We were trying to save you. A city street is no place for a mu- <sighs> a gorilla. <sighs> Pipe down, Missy. It appears my plan is coming together quite nicely. I must congratulate you, Sherman, on a job well done. Thank you, sir. Without your selfless dedication, I would still be living like an animal. This place looks like it's seen better days. Something about this veterinary hospital smells fishy to me. Huh. Check out those paw prints. What kind of animal walks on only two paws instead of four? Another locked door. I guess the only way to go is up. Grab hold. Mental note to self, never climb through a chimney wearing dry clean only clothes. Sam! Clover! The talking animals put us in here, and they did something weird to Jacob and the others. Don't worry. We'll get you guys out in a jiff. Not so fast, ladies. Hey! Pause off, you creeps! Get comfortable, girls. This is your new home from now on. I don't know what you think you're doing, pal, but I wouldn't count on us being in here for long. I am not your pal. My name is Dr. Fox, and what I think I'm doing is empowering animals to rise up against the humans who've kept them in cages for so long. Um, excuse me, am I the only one who thinks it's a tad ironic that this wacko's name is Dr. Fox? Is it your DNA mixed with Sherman's? Credit my ingenious DNA transformer, which allows animals to assimilate their DNA with mine, thus increasing their brain power. Now, I'll transfer my DNA to this ordinary lab mouse. Who are you calling ordinary? Impressive, is it not? It also works in reverse. That is to say, I can administer animal DNA to humans. So you turned Jacob and the others into animals? That's just cruel! Now, go forth and carry out our mission! There's a new mission now, Dr. Fox, to put all humans in cages, but not before turning all of you into animals. Wait, this isn't fair! I liberated you! My brothers, time to free our friends and embark on total domination of the human race. Turn them all into animals. Apparently, the animal's aggression is a side effect Fox didn't count on. <laughs> Easy does it, you brute! Quiet. It'll all be over soon. <laughs>
much, you guys. I don't know what I would have done if I were... Oh, looks like you were administered a little canine DNA. Uh, what am I going to do now? I have a date with David coming up. We'll deal with it later. Right now, we have to stop those animals. Shaman, it's great to finally be liberated. Don't mention it. Power to the animals! Alex. Now let's return the rest of the animals to normal. And you too, Clover. <sighs> Congratulations, girls, on another job well done. The whole experience made us realize how unhappy the animals were in their cages. I'm glad they decided to turn the zoo into a nature preserve. Now everyone is happy. Everyone except Clover, that is. I guess I have no choice. I have to call David and finally cancel our date. Hello? Hi, David. It's Clover. Listen, I have some bad news. So do I. I don't know how to tell you this, Clover, but I have to cancel our date. You do? Yeah. I forgot that I volunteered to work at the Beverly Hills Animal Shelter today. Sorry. I can't believe it! I feel so, so rejected! Well, gotta go. The animals are waiting.
David, that was pretty brave, risking your life on such a realistic fake mountain. Yeah, we'll see how I do in the real thing this weekend. It's gonna be way more extreme. Hello? Drool much? So, you're going climbing this weekend, huh? Can I tag along? Uh, I don't think so. It's gonna be pretty rough. Uh, not if you're there to protect me. No offense, but I think you're a little high maintenance for the type of extreme sports I'm into. Ouch. That's gonna leave a mark. High maintenance? Excuse me! Have you ever been bargain hunting? As far as sports go, it's totally extreme. Sorry, Clover. See you later, girls. Well, would it make a difference if I told you I was an international sports Clover? Clover? I can't believe you were going to tell him who you really are. Oh, who cares? What fun is it being a spy if we can't tell anyone? Where's the payoff? We should at least get, like, free facials or something. <sighs> the payoff is keeping the world safe, Clover. And you know telling David could put him in serious danger. I know. I just want a hottie to call my own. But there's only some way. Stop everything. Idea forming. <sighs> Clover, you don't know the first thing about rock climbing. Please. I was like the queen of my step aerobics class. How do I look? Like you're about to be shot out of a cannon. Chances are we won't even get to the rock climbing. David will take one look at me in this outfit and say... <laughs> Sorry to pull you away from your shopping, girls, but I'm afraid it's a matter of great... Oh, Clover, what on earth are you wearing? You look like a pink crash test dummy. It's... oh, forget it. Let's just get to the mission. Right. Two days ago, a Canadian news team disappeared while investigating a remote mountain region in Western Canada near Saskatchewan. Saskatchewan what? Saskatchewan. It's a place. Like the mall. <laughs> Yes. Over the last year, 25 local farmers and loggers have vanished from these mountains. The reporters were there looking for answers. Any clues? Only this distress call we picked up on a Whoop satellite from one of the reporters, Wade Ridgely. Please, anyone! There's something in the forest! It's all around! Okay. Scary. Yes. Something in those mountains could pose a threat to world safety. Whoop wants you spies to go undercover as campers to find out what it is. Campers? Like in pitching tents and stalking our own kill? Can't you put us up in a nice resort nearby? Hmm. Let me think about that. No. Now, let's get a look at your gadgets. Mostly standard issue, there's your heat sensor 6000 infrared motion detector sunglasses, jetpack backpack, Parachutes and something new I think you girls will enjoy. Boomerang Buzzsaw Barrettes. They come in three styles, Panda, Furry Kitty, and Unicorn. Remember, this is a dangerous mission, girls. Be careful. Don't worry, Jer. We can totally handle the wilderness. It's all about teamwork. I, I call, call a panda! panda. Jerry gave us were right around where the reporters disappeared. I say we set up camp here and start looking for clues. Sounds like a plan. Where's Clover? Clover! Okay, I don't know who designed this for us, but it needs an escalator. And could the woods be any dirtier? Don't worry, Clover. We brought plenty of water to wash up. Right, Alex? I... I thought you brought the water. Me? No, I'm the guide. The guide never brings the water. Who came up with that rule? The camping fairy? Well, why couldn't Clover bring it? She brought everything else and more. Hey, stop! We'll find water tomorrow. It's no big deal. Let's just set up camp and get a fire going before it gets cold. Who's got the matches? <laughs> Anyone got two stones? We can bang them together and the sparks would make fire. I've got a pair of clocks. Hey, I found some packages of hot chocolate. Way, Clover. Uh, what better way to prove 
To David, you're not high maintenance than by surviving out here. Oh, you're right. This is total proof. What are you doing? I'm gonna call him. Hello? David, hi, it's Clover. Uh, I just called to tell you I'm totally camping in the mountains uh, and freezing to death, I might add. Pretty extreme, huh? Uh, Clover? Uh, I'm a little busy and I don't want to cramp up. I knew you'd think so. So, what do you say? Can I come along on your climb this weekend if I'm still alive? Sure. Uh, whatever. Ah! Gore! You know, I think this whole outdoor thing is starting to grow on me. Uh, where's the nearest club? Ah! Uh, what was that? Get your sunglasses! Sound like the wind? According to the glasses, there's nothing out there. Ah! Ah! What is that? Everyone, just stay calm. Maybe it'll go away. down so we can get a closer look. Ew! So that's what's going on in this forest. Someone's growing men in pods. Hmm, not a bad idea, really. Wait, it's Wade huh? Ridgely. Uh. Oh. What happened? Where am I? You and your crew were attacked. You're safe now. Who did this to you? I don't know, but they were everywhere. And there was this sound. <gasps> Clover, help me get him up. <gasps> Wait, did you hear something? Where's Alex? Alex! <laughs> That's the sound! That's the sound it makes when it comes for you. When what comes? Oh my gosh! Look! It's the forest. It's alive! We gotta get out of here. No, Alex! We have to find. Something up ahead. <laughs> 
radio or something so we could call for help. Sam, how is the mission? Jerry, we're in trouble. It's the forest that's been abducting people. You've got to get us out of here. Yes, yes, of course. I'll send the jet immediately. It may take some time. We don't have time. Hurry! Seal the windows. We can't let them in. Professor Rasputin Zero. Zero? The conservationist? Hey, when we were investigating the disappearances, we came across that name. You were fighting to preserve this forest. I still am. By turning it into bloodthirsty Christmas trees? What's up with that, Scrooge? I merely gave the trees the ability to fight back with a bit of genetic engineering. The farmers and loggers of this region have been destroying the forest for years. And I thought it was time for a little payback. A little human snack to enjoy. So that's why Wade was in that cocoon. The trees were feeding off him. Yes. The human life force gives the forest its strength and intelligence. Listen, Freak Show. Thanks for the trip down Psycho Gardener Lane. But your trees made a mistake when they grabbed our friend. We want Alex and the others back. <laughs> I don't know. staying to watch, but I have a forest to attend to. It's useless! The roots are too strong! Great! I'm supposed to have a date with David, but instead I'm gonna be turned into fertilizer? There was only some way we could crack these pods open! Clover, your boomerang buzz sovereign. If you could throw it with your free hand, it might knock your cocoon down. <laughs> Maybe I'll make that date after all. Hello? Will you forget about your date and get us down? I've done it. No one can harm my forest now. <gasps> Something's wrong. I altered the forest to protect itself, not to attack innocent people. Hmm? You can't do this! I created you! No! The fire's working! Ah, help! Let go! Someone! Can anyone hear me? Oh, we can hear you. Doesn't mean we're going to help you. Please! These roots are very tight. I chafe easily. Where's our friend? I'm not exactly... Now, Pod Boy! There's a tree in the middle of the forest. The Queen. It controls all the others. You'll find your friend there. <gasps> Go! Find your friend. I'll get Zero down and try to keep these roots back. Wade, that is so heroic. You know, if we make it through all this, maybe you and I could... Come on! Are you sure we're going the right way? According to these coordinates, we're headed straight for... <gasps> Sam? What is... <gasps> oh my gosh! That is one buff tree. Yeah, and Alex is in one of those pods! <laughs> Okay, maintain the lumberjack 
to know, Whoop agents will be there any moment. They've already apprehended Professor Zero. What about Wade? He's fine. On his way home safely to his wife and children. Wife and... <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> so, how did you spies enjoy your time in the wild? I hope it wasn't too rough. Well, we were nearly thrown from a cliff, crushed by a helicopter, and digested by killer trees. Piece of cake, Jer. Oh, excellent, because it looks like the Whoop Jets are going to be pretty full getting the missing people to safety. You spies are going to have to hike down on your own. I wonder if they got that escalator built yet. Where is David? He's gonna freak when he finds out I can make our climbing date. You're not still thinking about telling him, you know, who we are? No need. After the way I handled the tree queen, I've totally proved I'm as extreme as he is. <gasps> there he is. Wish me luck. <laughs> Late, I... oh. What happened? Street luge accident. It was awful. Here's your breakfast, David. I blended up your favorites, eggs, sausage, and grits. Mandy's just been the greatest, like my own personal nurse. She's hmm. exactly what I need right now. Somebody calm and gentle, not extreme at all. <laughs> Come on. Sir, I'm afraid your books are overdue. The problem is yours, lady, because I ain't paying no fines. But that's our policy. Too bad. Tragically, you cannot, though you three will be traveling to England. England? But I can't! I have a 
very important, possibly life-altering video to star in. Well, I'm afraid it'll have to wait. Right now, I have an assignment for you. In the city of Liverpool, there have been a rash of odd occurrences. People's personalities have suddenly changed. Observe. This mild-mannered librarian started acting like a professional whistler. And this prominent surgeon can't stop dancing. And this army general now treats his officers like a kindergarten class. Freak? Especially since some of these people are very important. Then I guess we better find out what's causing this to happen fast. Precisely. And now for your gadgets. You will be using laser lipstick, earring communicators, the hair pick lock pick, suction cup bottomed go-go boots, and bags. Bags? Vapor emitting gloves. Wear them at your Ugh. olfactory risk. Ew! Nast! Indeed. And now you're off. Ah. As am I. Ah. <laughs> Amazing. I'm afraid I don't follow. The only thing I lifted for was books and my afternoon cup of tea. Now I can bench 150. I have never matched more and I'd get some bloke from Kensington. Want to come? Sounds like a blast, but unfortunately we'll have to take a rain check. Suit yourself. Now if you'll excuse me, I have to go work on my abs. <laughs> prefer a good book. But you're like the Birmingham brawler, dude. A butt-kicking powerhouse of strength. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes, well, I was the Birmingham brawler until last Thursday when I discovered Trollope, Emily Bronte, and Balzac. You don't happen to know the head librarian at the Liverpool Library, do you? Why, no, but I'd so love to meet her. We probably have a great deal in common. Well, thanks for your time. Keep digging on those books. Oh, yes, I shall. Well, cheerio, my dears. Just when I thought the first freak show was good, the second one was even better. It's like the game we used to play in nursery school, opposite <gasps> day. You're absolutely right, Alex. It's like they've switched personalities. But how is that possible, especially since they don't even know each other? I'm not sure, but we're going to find out. <laughs> Exactly. The librarian's date book. I want to know what's so special about last Thursday and what her connection is to our wrestler. Hmm. Huh? According to this, she met with uh, Dr. Gray on Thursday morning. Says here he's a shrink. He treats doctors, generals, teachers, and even celebrities like the Birmingham Brawler. Bingo! We have our connection. It's time to pay the good doctor a visit. Okay, so this is like the opposite of a normal place to live? Shrinks are so dramatic. Looks like nobody's home. I 
see we let ourselves in. Functional. <laughs> okay, let's split up and see what we find. Use your earring communicators to stay in touch. Well, besides the criminally tacky decor, everything looks pretty normal to me. Same here. How about on your end, Alex? Just a stuffy room filled with books. Hmm? Come to think of it, that wrestler would love it here. <laughs> Alex? Alex, are you okay? She's not answering. Let's find her. <laughs> Sammy? Can you hear me? Hello? Oh, this is so not good. So, I went over the falls in the battle caught the hoodlum on his fancy boat, and now he's shut away for years. Oh, my, what a story. How thrilling. Oh, excuse me, Your Majesty. I'll be just a minute. Hello? Jer, it's Clover, and I have a big-time problem. Alex and Sam just disappeared. I need you to help me ASAP. <laughs> yes, but I'm afraid that might not be possible just huh? this instant. I not possible? Hello? If you don't get here quick, I may be the next to vanish. And then it's goodbye, M-Channel, goodbye, Anson, and goodbye, Perfect Life. <laughs> Calm down. I have your coordinates. I'll be there as soon as I can. Everything all right? <laughs> oh, yes. Right as rain. Say, do you mind pointing me in the direction of the loo? Desperate times call for desperate measures. So, what is this place? The home of our prime suspect, Dr. Gray. He's switching the personalities of his patients. We just don't know how or why. Hmm. Very interesting. If by interesting you mean gaudy, then yeah, I'm with you. Not the decor, Clover. I'm talking about that. What is it? A pendant. The kind used in hypnotherapy. It's really heavy, and not in the cool 60s way. Well, that's because it's filled with some sort of circuitry. I wonder what this button does. It activates huh? my latest research tool. The highly potent and highly controversial behavioral adjuster. Dr. Gray, I presume. Huh? It allows me to alter the persona of anyone I see fit. So far, I've only used it on my annoying patients, but I assume that it works just as well on intruders. So, what is your deal? Why are you messing with people's personalities? Because I'm sick of listening to them complain. I figure if they learn to walk in each other's shoes, maybe they'll see life with a whole new perspective. Plus, it's a great deal of fun. Okay, kind of an extreme approach to therapy. Sometimes it's necessary to be extreme. In fact, since my experiment's going so well, I'm planning on going global, starting with the President of the United States. I think he could learn a lot from a rodeo clown. You'll never get away with it. We'll see about that. Get rid of them! <laughs>
really busy. Uh-huh, indeed. Uh -huh. You've been quite preoccupied. <gasps> oh, good heavens. No freaking way! Huh? Okay, this is the weirdest moment ever. Yeah, what happened to you guys? I gave them a little attitude adjustment. I so can't believe the nerve of you. I mean, talk about a major loser. Jerry, please. That kind of talk isn't going to alter our present predicament. Speaking of predicaments, things are about to get a lot worse. That's only the half of it. In a matter of moments, your cells will be teeming with rats. They will starve for days. Enjoy this psychological torture! Huh? Okay, ooh, guide me with a spore. This is seriously groaning. Unhand me, you vile creatures. Mercy, this is repugnant. I don't know which is scarier, the rats or those two switching personalities. Me neither. Silver, the laser lipstick is in your pocket. Brilliant thinking, Samantha. Three of us need to jet to DC before the press becomes a rodeo clown. <laughs> Jerry here. Oh no! I like totally forgot. I'll be there in a jiff. Later. Someone from the palace. It's nighting time. I guess that just leaves me and you. <laughs> we have to talk to the president right away. It's a matter of national security. Sorry to barge in on you like this, sir, but it's an emergency. Yeah, and evil shrink's about to turn you into a rodeo clown. Did you say a rodeo clown? Well, this is just plum crazy. Trust me, crazy doesn't even begin to describe this guy. Good evening, Mr. President. It's time for your counseling session. What no glorious name are those? The shoes you'll soon be walking in. See what I mean? He's way loony. That's right. And now we're here to kick your butt. <laughs> Okay, interesting lingo. So, uh, you ready to play some videos, guest VJ? Indubitably. Ah, what's this awful din? <laughs> Excuse me? This video. Don't tell me kids actually like this rubbish. This rubbish is fried garbage, and they're number one on the charts. Well, I must say their name is quite appropriate. Ah, 
Uh, is there anything you do like, Ms. Cranky? As far as I'm concerned, the only music worth its salt is the classical variety. Brahms, Mozart, Bach. I bet your audience would appreciate it as a welcome relief. Yeah, well, maybe we'll try it in another lifetime. Meanwhile... Oh, bother. on deciding to make me a knight. It's like such the unexpected treat. Even better than a shoe sale at the mall. Are you feeling okay, Mr. Lewis? Okay. I'm downright stoked, Queenie. Now let's get this party started. Oopsie. You'll never get away with this. Wanna bet? I guess we better go help the others. Good idea. And in the meantime, my men will take care of this clown. <gasps> so, I wonder how Clover and Jerry made out. Hmm. As far as I'm concerned, the only music worth its salt is the classical variety. Brahms, Mozart. I can't believe those words actually came out of my mouth. It's so embarrassing. What is embarrassing is my behavior at the palace. Not only does the queen now despise me, but my chances of ever becoming a knight are utterly nil. Oh, that's too bad, Jer. Huh? huh? Hmm. Hello? Yeah, that's me. No way! Yeah, totally. Okay, fine. You're so not gonna believe this. Anson, the love of my life has never gotten as many calls about a guest VJ. Everyone loves the cranky girl. They want me back. Awesome! You can thank me anytime. Uh, no, I don't need to thank you, Jer. I need to switch personalities with you. Where's that behavioral adjuster thingy? Oh, no. No, not in a million years. Come on, Jer! I said no. But, Jer, this is important. Please! <laughs> Oh, 
Snowboarding is so much cooler than skiing. You can tell by the outfits. Think you could teach me how? All right. Todd! Want a cup of my hot chocolate mochaccino mint supreme? It's imported. All right. Did I mention I snowboard and surf? <laughs> you okay, Clover? I'm fine. This ski bunny doesn't give up without a fight. It's gonna be one of those weekends, isn't it? Okay, after that bus ride with Mandy, I can't wait to just kick it. Yeah, it'll be nice to get a little peace and quiet before we hit the slopes. <gasps> You've got to be kidding! I specifically requested a single sweet! Please tell me this totally isn't happening! Girls, calm down! Calm down! The chaperone says we can't change rooms. Jer, you have to help us. You're our only hope of escaping Mandy! I'm sorry, high school rivalries do not fall under my jurisdiction. But Mandy's more of a menace than any villain we've ever faced! Can't you scrape together a mission? A cat up a tree? Something? Anything? The world doesn't need saving today. The best suggestion I can offer is to relax and enjoy your mission-free weekend. FYI, girls, I'll be taking this bed. You three can share the other one. Okay, newsflash, Mandy. None of us wanted to share sheets with you anyway. So, what happened to Todd? Did you run out of hot chocolate or did he just run? Please! Todd wanted to get in a few more runs before the race. We're hooking up again later. Ooh, what's this? My camera, and you can stop pawing at any time. You're gonna <gasps> drop it. Oops! My snowboard! <gasps> My outfit! Oops! Oh, oh, that's just great! I chipped a nail on your junk! Okay, let's get out of here now. <laughs> Hockey, skating, is there anything you can't do? <laughs> yeah, lose. <laughs> well, I'm a pretty good skater myself. <laughs> Ouch, that so hurt. Oh, Todd! Could you help me? These laces are so tricky. Is it right over left or left over right? <laughs> It 
wasn't my fault. Somebody deliberately cut that cable. And I would bet my allowance it was you. <laughs> Take your conspiracy theory to the police. They could use a good laugh. <laughs> Here, Mandy's taking trouble to an all new level. So sorry, Clover. I have bad news. The former arch nemesis, Dr. Jalee, has broken out of prison. That guy we stopped from freezing over the world? Yes, and he may be coming after you for revenge. Wait a minute. Maybe it wasn't Mandy trying to do us in after all. Maybe it was Dr. Jalee. Which means we should leave the resort immediately. We can pack really quickly. What it means, Clover, is that you three need to be careful. Jalee is very dangerous. Deadly, even. <laughs> no kidding. Last time he captured me, he forced me into a chess game. I almost died of boredom. Keep an eye out for your gadgets. I'm sending them via airdrop. And remember, keep your spying discreet from your classmates. No one can ever know. Good luck, spies. <laughs> So, I guess we all owe Mandy an apology. I'm dreading the thought of this. Hey! Huh? Mandy, we came to apologize. We thought you were to blame for our accidents. Ha! Huh. Come on, Todd. Let's leave before these posers blame me for their bad hair day, too. Kind and gracious as usual. So, Todd, on a scale of one to ten, how kissable do you think I am? Uh... Well, I think you're a ten. Let's kiss. Save the romance for later, Clover. Oh, no! ah! I can't believe it. I'm totally freaking. I gotta I, I, I get back. Oh, man. Uh, and that girl, Mandy, was just, like, kidnapped. Yay! But who would want to steal Mandy? Some half-frozen creepy guy. It's Julie, for sure. And he's got Mandy. Yeah, are we convinced this is a bad thing? Check. <laughs> Settle down, it wasn't that exciting. This is such a stupid game. I wonder if you like it. Silence. Huh? I've waited a long time for this rematch, Clover. Clover? The red outfit. I thought that. Well, think again and try not to strain your brain. Okay, what is this thing called again? That is a pawn, my dear. Something you have just become. <laughs> <laughs> Cry, but 
it so cold my tears would freeze, and besides, I really don't want to run my mascara. Help me, please. I think it's a setup. Julie wants us to find Mandy. And what Julie wants is of utmost importance to us. Why? Look, I know Mandy isn't our favorite person, but she doesn't deserve whatever Julie has in store for her. Besides, uh, think of it this way. If we save Mandy, she'll owe us big time. Okay, so how do we find them? Well, we could trace Mandy's yapping with our ultra-sensitive earring communicators. Good idea. We'll get the best reception at the top of the mountain. Come on, girls. We got a villain to catch. Yeah, and another one to save. No way! I am not playing any more chess! As my hostage, you are in no position to refuse. Besides, it's rude. Uh, well, excuse me if getting kidnapped was not on my to-do list today. Besides, you're not even good at this game. You will play chess, and you will like it. Read my chapped lips! No! Uh, that me. voice! My ears! My ears! Uh, do these earrings have a mute button? It sounds like Mandy's mouth is exactly due south. There's something important I must get. A less pathetic social life? Revenge! Um, Dr. Lee, remember how you wanted an ice queen? How about you let us go and we'll give you Mandy? Clover! Not even having you as my ice queen could make me give up my plot for revenge. With a push of this button, the snowmakers above this cabin will explode, triggering a monstrous avalanche. We're so flattened. Huh? Huh? You won't be needing these. I bid you all adieu. Okay, Clover, how long ago did you date that loser, and how did you end it? Because he <laughs> seriously needs closure. Bye-bye, spies. It's a deal. <laughs> you take care of Mandy. Clover and I will go after Julie. Where did you get those rad boots? From who? Uh, uh, Switzerland. <laughs> They're the next trend in winter wear.
first you don't succeed, spies. Try, try again. to see this righteous football movie, Alex? I was. Now I'm more interested in seeing a doctor. <laughs> You're funny. Actually, I wasn't <laughs> joking. How come I've never seen you around Beverly High, Marcus? Because I don't go to high school. I'm still oh. in junior high. You'll have plenty of time to get acquainted later, girls. Right now, we have a righteous football movie to see. <laughs> by the bell. Um, we'll meet you inside the theater. Chicks always gotta do stuff together. Good evening, ladies. What do you got, Chair? A break-in at the Internal Office of Information. 
We can be there in two minutes. Hurry, girls. National security could be at stake. We're never gonna find this guy. According to the security mainframe, the break-in was on the 89th floor. Ooh, nice work, Sammy. We can nab our intruder and be back to the theater before the opening credits. Huh? We can't take the elevator, Clover. He'll know we're coming. Alex is right. We have to take the stairs. <laughs> Did I say opening credits? We'll be lucky to make it back before the next showing. <laughs> should be just fine when he wakes up. Groovy! Now could we please find our bad guy and get back to the movie? <laughs> be careful what you wish for! Let's get him, girls! That's one way to get security clearance! There he is! <gasps> the loser that's ruining my date! And he's got some kind of microphone canister thingy! shoulders and try the hatch. Uh, it's no use. It's huh? jammed. Terrific. It's bad enough that we've destroyed my date. Now they're going to be responsible for destroying me. Okay, no, Clover. We are going to find a way out of this. Before or after we run out of air. <laughs> for a second. Don't remind me. One buck whoop coming right up. Hate it when that happens. Chances in this Brody elevator. 
There's gotta be some kind of gadget in here. You know, a stick of exploding gum, or a laser lipstick, or an eyelash curler catapult. In case you've forgotten, Sam, the majority of our gadget experiences haven't exactly been successful either. <laughs> places we get to visit. It makes our job seem almost like a vacation. than Alan. 
Alex is driving. Oxygen is getting to her brain. I suppose I could try and do something with the electronics of the elevator. Go for it! Wow! Watch out! Apparently, this is one bad guy we aren't going to be able to defeat. Are you kidding? We've beaten much worse baddies than this dumb elevator.
you're trying to cheer us up, you're going about it all the wrong way. Tell me about it. Reminiscing about our missions only makes me realize how much I hate Whoop and how being a spy has ruined my life. I have to agree. I don't think our lives could get any worse. Don't be so sure about that. <gasps> the elevator roof is on fire! Alex, what are you doing? <laughs> Absorbent moose. You know something, girls? For all our complaining about Whoop, there is one thing I remember liking about being a spy. What's that? Jerry. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> yes. Uh, thank you, girls. Now, why don't you run along and get back to your dates? But what about the intruder? Oh, we captured him what? a few blocks from here with this nasty little molecular melting gun. The suction cups on his feet made him quite easy to apprehend. Cool. In that case, come on, girls. I've got a quarterback to smooch. believe the stunt he pulled this time. Let me guess, he only called you eight times yesterday to say he loved you instead of his standard ten? Worse! For our three-day anniversary, he bought tickets to a monster truck rally. Boys are so overrated. As of this moment, I am officially off the market. You mean you're on a dating hiatus? That's right. No more boys. Like that'll last through lunch. Clover, you're overreacting. There are tons of great available guys everywhere. Like those two? Salutations, lovely ladies. 
By my calculations, the Beverly Hills Mall has the highest ratio of heartthrobs to honeys. You can count me out of your equation. I am so not looking for a boy. Come on, let's get a non-fat latte and make ourselves visible. Cafe. You too can find your truest love. Arrow through the heart dating experience? A computer matchmaking service? How cyber weird. Digital love? I don't buy it. I'm gonna try it. What do you think, Sam? I'm sure it's totally bogus, but it still might be fun. <laughs> I'll be right here. Staying strong, solidly single, Boys need not apply. Hello, girls. Welcome to Arrow Through the Heart. Please answer the following questions. Icing is to cake as blank is to love. Smoochies, intellectual honesty and political courage. Hey, I'm Stan. Stan? Standing here hoping you'll go out with me. As if. Hey, gorgeous. They say beauty's only skin deep. Let's you and I get shallow. <laughs> Which boy do you think is cuter? Boy A or boy B? Boy A. Definitely boy B. Too late for you. You could still get an arrow through the heart match in time for the Valentine's dance. Oh no, I don't want one. Since I have sworn off boys, I've had tons of free time. Last night, I completely reorganized my handbag closet. You have a handbag closet? I told you, I have tons of free time. <laughs> so I was hoping. This is for you. that launched a thousand ships and burnt the topless towers of Alien? You're quoting Dr. Faustus? Sweet Sam, make me immortal with uh, octopus. <gasps> Creamed calamari is my favorite. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
clever. I told you about Roy. He's such a dream boat. So's my Petey Pie. Let me guess, your new arrow through the heart boyfriends? You mean my new Roy friend? <gasps> Notice that half the girls in the school are crazy tweaked about their computer dates. Um. <clears throat> oh, sorry, Clover. I was just thinking about my dream boy, Chad. And I was thinking about my adorable Marco. Don't tell me you two are love struck too. What did your dates do? Propose? Not yet. But look! Marco gave me an authentic cubic zirconium sweetheart ring. Chet gave me one made from genuine imitation diamondoid. Ah! Okay, what is wrong with you two? You can't be this head over heels after just one date. Right after the dance, we're dropping out of school. Yeah, we need to free up more time to spend with our soulmates. What? <laughs> Even the school studs are duds? Something is seriously whacked around here. I'm calling Jer. I don't see a problem, Clover. Whoop satellites have discovered zero evidence of hypnotic pathogens in the Beverly Hills or Beverly Hills adjacent areas. There's something majorly disturbing going on. There's no current global crisis. You should enjoy the time off. Perhaps do a bit of dating yourself. I'm on hiatus. If Jer won't give me any backup, go in this mission alone. First things first, gadgets. Okay, old gadgets. M-ray contact lenses in aquamarine, ultra-sensitive two-clip banana barrette listening device, and chewable, glueable tracking gun. Oh. Swirls of color remind me of the whirlpools of your eyes. Oh, Marco, your intellect is dizzying. I don't know what's grosser, the cheesy love talk or this liver flavored tracking gum. Alas, my love, I'm forced to leave you. Until Friday's dance, dear Marco, parting is such exquisite pain. <laughs> I my little sister some one-on-one -on -one coaching time before her synchronized swimming tryouts. I can totally dig that. See you at the Valentine's dance tomorrow night. Store. 
So this is where he gets his trinkets. Your lovely quarry, darling. You are very beautiful diamonds. Uh, what's this, darling? Uh, I think someone must have just left it here. Do you go to Beverly Hills High? No, I go to the Institute for Gifted Teens. Eugene! Yes, Mommy? Have you made a sale to this girl? Uh, no, not yet. Buy something or get out! Yes, sir. So, uh, you want to go to the dance? Should I pick you up at eight? Will you marry me? really getting out of hand. I gotta shut it down before... Pretty much. Better find Sam and Alex. Marco is gonna love these. Pink is Chet's favorite flavor. I have to talk to you two. Not now, Clover. We have to get ready for the dance. I have to do my hair. Marco likes it up. I have to get a manicure. Chet likes me to wear seafoam nail polish. Earth to zombie chicks! This is a crisis situation. There is something wrong with your stupid soulmates. You're just jealous, Clover. Yeah, you had a chance for true happiness and you threw it away for this dumb dating hiatus. You could have had a wonderful boyfriend. <sighs> but you don't understand. Come on, Alex. We don't want to keep Marco and Chet waiting.
resist me. No woman can resist me. you to Marco. And Chet. And Javier. And Petey Pie. And Roy Boy. And Wally. And Jason. And last, and definitely least, Eugene Smith. thrown in jail? You wish. You know you're right. 
right. I shouldn't have let him get away before reminding him to pick up my dry cleaning. Ugh. Now, who's up for an afternoon at the beach? Are you sure that's such a good idea? It's getting so dark out. Huh? That's not darkness. It's wokeness. Some top-secret artificial intelligence microchips were stolen. Freaky! Well, it could be if the chips were to fall into the wrong hands. From what I understand, they're quite powerful. Then I guess we'd better hurry up and find out where they went. Indeed. And now for your gadgets. <gasps> Infrared motion detector sunglasses. Expandable table bungee belts. Titanium drill heel boots. Retractable razor faux nails in cosmic blue. And an electromagnetic field disperser walk map. Goodbye, girls. Or as they say in the military, shove off. So all that's missing are the AI microchips? Affirmative. And there's no sign of forced entry into the base? That's correct. Just a small hole blown in the side of the building. Way too small for anybody to squeeze through. Unless the thieves were mice. <gasps> what? Like weirder things haven't happened? Any idea why someone would want to steal this stuff? Maybe to build a robot, maybe to build some kind of smart weapon. Some similar chips were stolen about a year ago. Let's spread out and look for clues. Hmm? Hey! Check this out! What is it? It looks like our standard issue GI combat helmet. Only really tiny. Huh. All of a sudden, Alex's mice theory doesn't sound so dumb. Thank you! Let's show it to Jerry. Hmm? Maybe he can shed some light on things. It's an accessory for a line of action figure toys. Limited edition high-end soldiers called Combat Chuck and Combat Betty. Let me get this straight. Whoever broke into the base brought toys with them? It would appear that way. Is it me or are bad guys just getting more and more pathetic? So, where can we find these Combat Chucks and Combat Bettys? It says here they're only sold at one store. Toy Universe in Burbank, California. Then I guess that's the next place we're going. We'll be in touch, Jerry. You coming, Clover? Right after I check my messages. Ugh, talk about majorly rude. Randy left me 35 messages. But I thought you liked him acting like a servant and tending to your every need. Yeah, I do, but that doesn't give him the right to monopolize my voicemail. I mean, hello? With him clogging up my system, how am I supposed to keep up a normal social life? You're not, because we're on an important mission, remember? Oh, right. The immature bad guy with a toy obsession. Ugh. Let's do it. Cool toys. I don't get what they have to do with the breaking at the base. Or with a bunch of artificial intelligence chips. In that case, we should just pack it in. I mean, you know, we probably still have time to hit the beach. Dr. Frankenstein style. 
I think I'm starting to understand the artificial intelligence microchip connection. Come on, let's get out of here! Where do you man, think you're going? Ah! You got that right, little lady. My name's Seth. I'm a toy designer. Oh, let me guess. You're responsible for those evil little creatures back there. I'm afraid so. Man, I think you better re-examine your definition of the word toy. Totally. I mean, what's with oh. this microchip I found on a dinosaur's head? Let me see that. It says here it has an extremely powerful internal electronic energy source and numerous microprocessors. There's only one organization that could have created something like this. The U.S. military. Uh, about a year ago, I borrowed a few chips from them to make my soldiers the most realistic toys on the market. Borrowed? Sounds more like you stole them. Okay, I stole them, but I swear I didn't realize how powerful the chips were. I didn't know they would make the toys act this way. It's like they have minds of their own now. Criminal minds. So you mean, this time the toys are the ones that broke into the base? Yeah, they're totally out of control. Wow, I guess that explains the helmet we found, and the tiny hole. And now they're using the chips to create an army out of other toys. Why would they do that? I'm not sure. Frankly, I'm kind of afraid to find out. <gasps> really? How did you find me? Believe me, it wasn't easy. Well, what do you want? I thought you might want a sweater in case you got cold. It's supposed to get pretty chilly tonight. Uh, Randy, could you do me a mega big favor? Your wish is my command, darling. Did you get lost? Because I'm like totally in the middle of something. Huh? No problem. I'll see you later. Okay, Randy just
just went from being the best to being a pest. And now on to more pressing matters, like stopping those toys. But we don't know where they are. They may go back to my toy factory. It's kind of their home base. Then we should make sure we're there waiting for them. Let's hit it. <laughs> Sneaking into Seth's place again? We don't want to take any chances. Yeah, I've had enough ambushes for one day. Come on, we can go in through here. I can't see anything. Do a quick scan for us, Alex. I think I see something right below us. Let's take him out. That'll take you to... Hey, how come they're not fighting back? These must be last season's models, the ones without the chips. Then I guess we got our bungees in a twist over nothing.
Nicely done, ladies. The world is once again safe from renegade toys. Huh? Somehow that doesn't sound as impressive as it actually is. Huh? Hmm? Do we really have to send Seth to jail? He did steal classified military technology. Hmm. But seeing as he saved your lives back there, I'm going to recommend an intense regimen of community service. Hmm. <laughs> Go. I need to find another date for the Teen Sickle concert tonight. Huh? Teen Sickle concert? I scored front row tickets. Anyway, I'll see you around. Long-term commitment. Huh? I'll be done in a sec. Huh? So, what's your sign? I'm a sad. Uh huh. Okay. Thanks. Uh, and what kind of music do you like? Um. Wow, me too. On a date, would you rather go dancing, rollerblading, or stay in and watch a movie? Take your time. Time's up. Clover hmm. <laughs> is gonna be through a year's worth of guys before the day is out. Shopping. Uh, I hope she doesn't mean hypersonic shopping. So, how the dates go? Great. Boys number three, nine, and fourteen all get second dates. <gasps> I'm gonna date all of them for an entire minute to get to know them better. So, you could have a new boyfriend by lunch and break up with him by dinner time and make up with him before the mall closes.
cloud, I might add. Did you notice anything about that gadget he used on us? It was almost an exact copy of the Wind Tunnel 9000 Tornado Blast hairdryer. I better call Jerry. Okay, either my ex powder isn't working or Jerry's not answering. Ugh, hasn't he heard of call waiting? It's like he's living in the past. We'll just have to go to Whoop and see him in person. <laughs> Jerry's giving Whoop a facelift and forgot to tell us. Hey, check out the weird new kind of rollerblades. Alex, that's the old kind. Jerry must be disguising Whoop as a roller rink. See, I was living in the past. Still no answer on the X-Powder. You think he shut down Whoop and went on vacation? Let's find out. Telling us? That would mean we're fired! So instead of firing us in person, he just stops calling? Oh, he is such a boy. Forget it, Sam. He's not going to answer. I'm trying to tap into the police network. Sam, this is no time to file a missing person report. This is bigger than just Jerry. Whoop is missing. And I bet that disco van in the purple cloud has something to do with it. Here it is. That freaky van has been involved in two robberies, both at electronic stores. So they're targeting electronics. Good. At least we know where to expect them to hit next. <laughs> Stakeouts are so boring. I know. I'll set up some more hypersonic dates. Ugh, that'll take longer than the dates themselves. What's the deal? My phone is cutting out. <laughs> Walter, turn it off! It's starting again! For the mothership to pick you up. Oh, Mandy? What? I'm Phoebe. But I like that name. Maybe I'll name my first daughter Mandy. <laughs> Stop messing with us, Mandy. What happened to Beverly Hills? And what is up with your hippie get? Don't be such a square man. Fashion is just a lot of superficial jive. Here, I wrote a column about it in the school paper. 
Peace! It's like we're on another planet. Not another planet, another time! Check out the date on this paper. It's 1975. <gasps> we're in the 70s? That means no cell phones or CDs or personal computers. It's like prehistoric times. And all the guys I'm hypersonic dating, they're not even born yet. Guys, calm down. That van must have jumped through some kind of time portal and we did too. That means we can get back to our own century. But in the meantime, let's not attract any more attention. How do I look? <laughs> can you say groovy? Not bad. Styles may come and go, but I look fabulous in just about anything. <laughs> oh, I wonder if the X powder works on the car. Hey, it does work. Jerry makes the best gadgets. The tracker says the van is this way. Take a left into this parking lot. It looks like the time machine is at a loading dock in the back, so we'll go in the front. What's this? Too big to be a cell phone? That's an eight-track cassette. It's like a primitive CD. This is a phone. Whoa, Alex, look out! <gasps> Alex, are you okay? Get me out of this weird chair! All these 70s gadgets are just like gadgets. Whoop gadgets. Yeah, they're just slightly ahead of their time. <laughs> Turkeys on the flip side give you any trouble? Look, mellow out, man. Everything's out of sight, all right? Got enough groovy parts for hundreds of far-out gadgets, and the new time-space foggy meter works even better than a prototype. Right on. Slide me some skin, man. Right on. <gasps> what are they talking about? There's something creepy about that driver. I don't know what it is, but he's... with a really bad 70s look. Hey, who are these foxy ladies and how'd they know my name, eh? Dig it, they're evil spies from the future. But don't worry. Mm. Our disco chicks got all the kung fu moves. <laughs> Unfortunately for you, we're trained in kung fu. <laughs> to change the mood with my mood ring. No way, Jerry! You're not using a gadget on us! <laughs> what are you gonna do now, Jerry? Stop us with lame 70s music? <laughs> Jerry, what's going on? Don't you know us? Yeah, we're like your best and cutest Whoop agents. Actually, since we're in the past, you should be starting Whoop right about now. Look, if you know about the World Organization of Human Protection, then you must be from the future, since BG and I haven't started Whoop yet, man. BG? Boogie Gus, the boss man of Whoop and genius inventor of time travel. Yeah, what's with that? Why are you stealing technology from the future? To get a jump on you evildoers, of course. That was BG's idea, too. I'll take it from here, man. Get the van ready so we can book it out of this time zone. Hey! <gasps> Listen, Booger Gus, you may have Jerkon, but we know he's the one that started Whoop. Yeah, and frankly, you don't look smart enough to invent a time machine. <laughs> Whoop, the World Organization of Harmon People, is my own far out and solid idea. But you're right, Jerry did invent the time machine, and I was smart enough to steal it. <gasps> I'm from the future. Like you, and I worked at Whoop 2 as part of the custodial staff. I snagged the time machine when no one was looking and brought it back to the 70s. Why'd you pick such a lame decade to travel to? To get to Jerry before he started the real Whoop. Foxy and intelligent. Right on. Besides, the 70s rule because that's 
dance when disco started. I was the greatest disco dancer ever. Check it! Geeky, but not bad. So you're bringing disco back to the future? That is beyond evil and beyond tacky. <laughs> and I'll be the only one with Jerry's gadgets. Um, what's so terrible about a thick, cushy rug other than that yucky color? I mean... That is the deepest pile shag rug in the world. Once you're in deep enough, you won't be able to breathe. <gasps> well, got a boogie. Maintain, ladies. See ya. Wouldn't want to be. Ew! We're going to be killed by an ugly carpet? Would you feel better if we were killed by one of Jerry's own gadgets? Jerry's gadgets! Wait, I picked up his mood ring during the fight. I got it here somewhere. Um, hurry, Alex! Uh, um, I think I got it! <gasps> now, how does it work? and Jer must have taken their time machine to the present. No, wait! This looks like the thingy that came out of the van. <sighs> it must be the prototype time machine that Jerry was talking about. <laughs> Let's hope it's set for the right time and not the Stone Age. Ugh, this might as well be the Stone Age. Ready? Yeah. 
to normal, but where's Jerry? Also back to normal. Oh, the old Jerry back! <clears throat> yes, the old Jerry. Yes. Shame I couldn't keep my hair. <laughs> the afro was not a good look for you, Jer. Okay, just so we're clear, we're in our own time now, and everything's like it was? Everything is as it should be. The time travel project has been discontinued. Or rather, it was never started. It's all rather complicated. As I said, everything is as it should be. Though I did keep the mini nuke mood ring. Rather a charming little gadget, don't you think? Uh. Hurry, dear. I want to get some organic hemp underwear before they're sold out. Mom! Would you start living in the 21st century already? Nice to see everything's back to normal at the mall. Even Clover. Hey, Clover, don't you have to be on, like, 50 dates in the next half hour? Yeah, what happened to hypersonic dating? Oh, please, that is so five minutes ago. Ultra slow dating is the way to go now. I'm spending all week with Eric. Mm -hmm. Wow, when does it start? It's already started. Eric is just two hours late. Two hours? And you're not mad? Please, of course not. There's no need to rush our relationship. Now, I don't want to be rude, but you know, I'm on a date. Okay, well, we'll just go ultra slow shopping then. I feel so out of touch. If I were to go out with a boy, how would I even know what kind of date we're on? I guess we're just a couple old fashioned girls, Alex. <laughs> <laughs> to meet you, Monsieur Guillaume. Give it up, girls. Your friends is Trey Lame. Maintenant, je vais retourner au travail. Oh. Give it up. Are you kidding? I, I can, can totally, totally tell he did me. He was talking to me. As if. Well, I saved him. Well, he wouldn't even be here if it wasn't for me. It's official. You're both completely insane. Whoa. Oh. Oh. Apologies for summoning you so early, but I have an exciting announcement to make. I'm getting married! Married? Oh, I, I 
Well, this is quite sudden, but why waste time when you know it's meant to be? Smoochie poo! Myrna Peasbottom, our ex nanny is smoochie poo? Okay, obviously, this insanity thing is contagious. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> 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 Hello, girls. So terribly wonderful to see you again. <laughs> mm. Can you believe I had a tire blowout in the middle of the desert, then out of nowhere, Myrna was there to save me? Um, not exactly my idea of kismet, but then again, I'm me and you're you, so, uh, <laughs> way to go, dear. Yeah, congrats. Now, the wedding is in a few hours, and I'll need your assistance. Alex, you'll be in charge of the invites, clover, decorations, and Sam, the flowers. <laughs> <laughs> Gladys. Here are your wedding essentials. This is so exciting. Oh, totally. Like, who better to decorate a wedding than moi? Who can time true love, Sam? Now, chop, chop. Clock is ticking. Okay, hello. Am I the only one who thinks this whole thing is happening way too fast? Dress. It's supposed to be ugly. How else can the bride look good? Not the dress, the wedding. I mean, Jerry hardly knows Myrna, and in case you've forgotten, she is a mega pain in the butt. Which is exactly why they're perfect for each other. I know. I can't believe we didn't think of hooking these two up sooner. Friends, loved ones, spies. We are gathered here for the joining of these two agents. I think we should get Jerry out of the sun ASAP. He's all burned. I think someone's a little jealous of his happy glow. I think both of you should shush so I can hear. Do you, Myrna Beesbottom, take Jerry Lewis to be your lawfully wedded husband? I do. <gasps> and do you, Jerry Lewis, take Myrna Beesbottom to be your lawfully wedded wife? Do I? By the power vested in me, I now pronounce you husband and wife. You may kiss the bride. Jerry! Hang on, dear! Don't worry, dear! I'm coming! Jerry? Bunny? Smoochie poo! <sighs> Guess that's what they mean by taking the plunge. Come, my little bunny. The reception is about to start. Uh, okay, now why would the cliff just suddenly give way? Huh. Aha! I bet this had something to do with it. Come on, Sammy, let's go. Yeah, you don't want to miss Jer feeding Myrna cake, do you? <laughs> This whole Jerry Myrna thing is giving me the creeps. Something is definitely up, and I'm gonna figure out what it is. Ça me brise le cœur de voir une piscine dans cet état. Did you hear that? He said I have beautiful eyes. No, he didn't. He said my smile is fetching. Will you two focus? Not only is it way weird that Myrna showed up out of the blue, but she didn't even try to save Jerry when he fell. I mean, she is a former Whoop agent. It's like instinct. She probably froze in shock. That happens when someone you love is in danger. Think about it. If Myrna wanted something to happen to Jerry, why would she have a wedding with a bunch of whoop agents? Hmm. Maybe you have a point. But something still isn't right. So talk to Jerry about it. Yeah, just tell the old guy how you feel. You're right. I'll call him right now. Hello, girls. Hey, hey Myrna. Where's Jerry? Why are you answering his phone? Bunny is taking the day off to recover from his little cliffside mishap, so I'm filling in. With over 30 years of experience, I'm more than qualified. Right. Well, just tell him I called. 
Myrna filling in for Jerry. That's it. I'm going to his house right now. His house? How totally intrusive. Count me in. Have fun. I'll be right here if you need me. <laughs> um, second thought, I'd better stay here. Catch you later, Sammy. Uh -huh. <gasps> at all, Jared. Hey, what's this? I knew it! Something is way wrong. <gasps> I can't be in the right place. Smoochie! Oh, Jerry! What happened to you? Oh, my Myrna, I miss her so. She's in my heart, she's in my soul, she's in my... Muffins! Huh? I'm baking little heart-shaped muffins to match her sweetness. Have you lost your mind? The only thing I've lost is my heart to Myrna. I even wrote a song about her. My, my Myrna! You are in big time trouble, Jerry. There's got to be something that's making you act this way. Oh, yes. Once a man has a wedding ring, it changes his life, you know. <gasps> that's it. The ring! It must be controlling you! Isn't it beautiful? Just like my Myrna. <gasps> Jerry, look! The diamond! It's pumping some sort of ooze into you! Hands off, Miss A. Smoochie Boo! Gee, where's your newlywed glow, Myrna? It's time for our honeymoon at Niagara Falls. Now be a good bunny and go wait in the van. Okay, my lovely. Whatever you say. I don't know what you're up to, lady, but I won't let you poison Jerry's mind anymore! <laughs> Do you really think you would have assigned me as your nanny if they thought you could defeat me? <laughs> <laughs> Again, dearie. Okay, what's with the throwing stars? What are you, some kind of ninja act? As a matter of fact, I am. <laughs> and in my discipline, I also learned of an ancient Japanese herbal love potion. So that's what's in Jerry's ring. Pretty clever, huh? Which is why I deserve to run whoop. Not that mini Jerry. And as you've seen, he's in no condition to stop me. But I am. <laughs> well, not this second, but just wait till I get out of this mess. You can try to your little heart's content, but thanks to Jerry's generosity, whoop becomes mine. <laughs> <laughs> Another ancient Japanese herbal concoction. <laughs> Enjoy. Not good! bring your work home with you. Oh, 
jet amphibious flight suit. Awesome! <laughs> Not bad. Oh, Jerry, married one day and suddenly you can't pick up after yourself. <laughs> Inflatable. Finally a purpose for the beret. to the La Cinema. Pardon? What she means is, uh, vous c'est a moi. Go to the restaurant for some food, grub, chow. Clover, Alex, hurry! Myrna is an evil ninja who's trying to get rid of Jerry so she can run Whoop. Look familiar? This was in Jerry's tire. It's the same as the one I found at the cliffside and the ones Myrna threw at me. So I see. Sorry, Gilliam. <laughs> we have to bid you adieu. Au reservoir. <laughs> How do you say we're off to save our boss from his evil ninja bride in French? <laughs> Romantic, my sweet, not to mention invigorating. It's about to get even more exciting. Oh, that was funny. You got that right! <laughs> you! I should have known to get rid of you when I was your nanny. Your little game is over, Myrna. Get your claws off our Jerry. Gladly. You two go after him. I'll go after Myrna. Advantage Nitten! 
ninja. Poo. Bunny, you have to help me. Oh, I'll help you out, all right. No! I... Oh, oh, look how wonderful I am. I'm, I'm, I'm irresistible. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> and so clever, too. <laughs> Ricky, she's totally worshipping herself, even more than she normally does. <laughs> Come on, Jerry. We need to know who Gwilion digs once and for all. And your Frances is très fantastico. Girls, I'm really not in the mood to translate love poems. You owe us, Jer. We saved you from a life of misery. <laughs> Where's Gillian? Sammy, what did you do with him? <laughs> the nerve! After everything we've been through, the days together, exchanging heartfelt words, Gillian likes Mandy? Qu'est-ce que vous avez, les filles? Vous n'appréciez pas d'avoir une piscine propre? Did he just tell her she had beautiful eyes? That two-timer! <laughs> Not to worry, girls. Judging by what Guillaume is saying, he doesn't like Mandy. All he cares about is linings, filters, and skimming. Really? That's all he's talking about? The pool? Really. Poor Mandy. If only she knew she was making a fool of herself. Yeah, like, hello. Anyone can tell if a guy likes them or not. I mean, please. <laughs> Dude, you put the tart and tardy. Oh. Okay, girls, the quicker we do this, the quicker we go home. Oh. 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 Going somewhere. <laughs> uh, you know, sorry, this car's full. <laughs> I mean, give it up already. By the way, didn't anyone tell you that brown is the new black? No, Mother, bringing your own pillowcases isn't necessary. Yes, Mother, I'm certain I can pick you up. No, Mother, it's no bother. Goodbye, Mother. Pretty much. I mean, hello. <laughs> Freezing here. Sorry, girls. With my mother coming to visit next week, everything's been rather topsy-turvy around here, including the air conditioning system. Didn't bother me. <gasps> 
much better. So, what's the 411 on the early AM 911? I called you here because I have some fantastic news. You've all been promoted. Promoted? Why? What's the catch? No catch. You three shall officially leave your junior spy days behind and join the ranks of Whoop's most elite secret agents, which means more danger, more responsibility, and more missions. Isn't that exciting? <laughs> exactly. What part of more danger, more responsibility, and more missions are we supposed to be psyched about? Yeah, I understand your concern, but I assure you this is a wonderful opportunity. Very few agents ever get to this level. I think Jer's right. It does sound exciting. No, it sounds like we'll be sweating. A lot. But thanks to my new rabbit diet, I'm in peak physical condition. Um, ugh. Don't get her started, Jer. Trust me. Did you know that carrots are jam-packed with vitamin A and beta-carotene goodness? <laughs> Guess I must have skipped that chapter in my rabbit diet book. Uh-oh, half a carrot. Your carotonic levels are dangerously low, Jer. There. That should help. I think it's time for you to go. Good luck. Whoa! Love the Greek chic! Woo! It's like being on a reality show, only it's not fake! An infinity pool! A hot tub! Oh, I could definitely get used to this. Good morning, ladies. <gasps> My name is Terence. I'll be your host during your stay. Nice to meet you, Terence. May I escort you to your private rooms? Finally, I'm getting the perks I so richly deserve. Just hope I brought enough carrots. <gasps> wow! Pick a door, any door. Each leads to your own private suite of rooms. Wait, there are four rooms, but only three of us. Hey. Girls, I'd like to introduce you to your fellow agent, Dean. <laughs> He'll be joining you in your training session. Allow me, Tear. My name is Clover, but you can call me Smitten. <laughs> Ladies. Oh, this place is too good to be true. <laughs> Be mixing business with pleasure. It's about to get better. Not just dinner, a black tie gala. Wait! I can't go! I don't have anything for all to wear! <clears throat> Help yourself to whatever you need. Extension 3 is for the tailor. Ah! Oh, ah! That settles it. I am never leaving. Be downstairs at 8 p.m. sharp. And don't be late. Your instructors will be waiting. We'll be there with Couture on. Personally, I can't wait to start our super spy training. <laughs> You are. Please have a seat. What's with the trays? I bet it's some delicious gourmet meal with a name I can't pronounce. <laughs> well, what are we waiting for? Let's open them and find out. <gasps> Ooh! You're giving us jewelry? Is it me? Or does this night just keep getting better and better? Spies, meet your instructors. <gasps> Go on, open them. Welcome. Hello. Greetings. Pleasure to meet you. Throughout your training, they will be your guides and mentors. Your lockets summon them when needed. Oh, I get it. The lockets project who we really are inside. I think you're spot on, Clover. What is that supposed to mean? <clears throat> now that you've met your instructors, training will begin immediately. But what about the gourmet dinner I can't pronounce and my designer outfit? Center yourself. Forget your hunger. Right now, you've got work to do. This is the top secret whoop training facility? I was expecting something a little more... High tech! Cool! 
Welcome to training. You four are here because you're the chosen ones. <laughs> chosen ones? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, we thought you were kidding. This is no joke, and you becoming spies was no accident. I've been watching you since birth. Gadgets and ability to problem solve were apparent from a very early age. Ah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Even back then, I was boy crazy. More importantly, your spying abilities and observational skills were light years ahead of your time. Speaking of observation skills, how did Whoop spy on me? Ew, camo tastic. Talk about being light years ahead of your time. Style-wise. Hey! Nice run, boy! You're as quick as a jackrabbit! I can't believe I was rabbit ass even back then! Your athletic prowess and ability to disguise yourself didn't go unnoticed. What about Dean? Dean was the most advanced of all. He was chosen the day he was born. <laughs> Dean's intelligence and natural fighting skills were clearly exemplary. A martial arts hottie even as a baby? I think I'm in love. Move over! I said her! No, you didn't! We all saw him at the same time! Ladies, please! There's enough Dean to go around. Yes, ladies, please. It's time to focus. Run Super Spy Sim 1. Let the virtual training begin. This is like my worst third grade gymnastics nightmare come true. Don't worry, Clover. We're the chosen ones. Everything's gonna be fine. Your first mission. Make it across the ravine without falling. Duh! Thanks, I think we got that. So, who wants to go first? With rabbit power on my side, I should be able to hop across no probs. As soon as you say no probs, there's always probs. I am really getting the hang of this. Piece of cake. The secret is not to... <gasps> Look down! <laughs> By rule number one, evaluate your fear factor and manipulate it. Wait, I've got it! You've got what? This is a mind over matter exercise. All we have to do is close our eyes and imagine that the ravine isn't so steep. Why are we wearing blindfolds? Maybe it's something fun, like a game of pin the tail on the donkey or a pinata. <laughs> Doubt it. In fact, I have a sinking suspicion that whatever it is, it's not good. What are we supposed to do here? You know, other than get our butts kicked. Super spy rule number two, you must have faith in your intuition. My intuition is saying... Over, 
On your right. A little too close for comfort. Oh, nice job. Your final mission. Get across the river to the other side. If you had all gone on the rabbit diet with me, we could have been jumped across. You must use the boat provided. Plus, there are a few catches. Naturally. One, Dean must always be in the boat. Two, there's only room for Dean and one other spy in the boat. Three, Clover and Alex can't be left alone together. Four, Sam and Alex can't be left alone together. Understand? Yeah, I understand. Those are the most confusing rules I've ever heard. You've got three minutes. Okay. What if I take Clover across, then return for Alex, then take Sam? But Alex and I will be alone together while you take Clover across. And I'll be alone with Clover while you go back for Sam. I've got it. First, Dean will take Alex across. Then he'll go back and pick me up. He'll leave me on the other side, but take Alex back with him. Then he'll leave Alex there while taking Sam across. Finally, he'll return for Alex. <laughs> it's a simple teamwork exercise. Clover, that was amazing. All those years spent figuring out how to pay for designer clothes on layaway were bound to pay off eventually. Come on, spies. Let's do it. your training day. Congratulations. Oh, oh, I can't remember the last time I was this tired. Or this sore. Guess it comes with being the chosen ones. Well, this chosen one had better get some room service on the devil. I hear the carrot cake's delicious. <laughs> Where's Dean? <gasps> Where did he 
still down there! Then we've got to save him! No, everything is not all right. Where have you been? I retired early, but when I couldn't sleep, I thought a nice walk would tucker me out. Oh, looks like it worked. You mean you didn't notice the earthquake that rocked the entire mansion? Earthquake? Or the flooding ballroom where we almost drowned? Flooding ballroom? Oh, my. Or Dee's bizarre disappearance in a thin air, or rather water? Uh, how long was your walk? It sounds like you girls have had quite a night. But don't worry, I know where Dean is. Would you like to see him? <gasps> Dean! You see? Dean is fine. Oh, At least he will be fine if you do as I say. Oh, stop! You're hurting him! <laughs> you see, the closer you get to Dean, the tighter the Lucite's grip on him gets. Years of fetching towels and room service finally make you snap? You have no idea what it's like always being second. Nothing Terence did was ever good enough. Well, that's all gonna change starting now, mates. Now, if you want to prevent your fellow chosen one from getting crushed, I suggest you do as I say. Okay, what do you want? Oh, I'm sorry I had to interrupt your training and dispose of your instructors, but I have a mission for you. You three will eliminate Jerry. Charite? Uh, like we'd ever hurt Jerry. Besides, what did Jerry ever do to you anyway? That's for me to know and you to find out. After you eliminate him, you'll retrieve the microchip he keeps hidden under the large birthmark on his neck and return it to me. Be watching your every move. Try any funny business, and you'll never see your good friend Dean again. Don't worry, Dean. We won't let you down. There's a chopper waiting for you. Say goodbye to Jerry for me. <laughs> okay, in case you like completely flaked, here's a little update. So, one sec we're just these normal high school girls slash spies. The next sec, Jer tells us that we're being promoted to regular high school girls slash super spies and being sent to a totally tricked out, totally top secret training facility. Pretty major, right? Wrong! Besides the part where we meet a fellow spy hottie named Dean and got to hang with some cool virtual whoop instructors, the experience pretty much reeked. Not only were we viciously attacked by an angry ballroom, but our host Terrence turned out to be a big time baddie. He totally captured Dean and stuck him in some weird gel cage thingy, then asked us to eliminate Jerry and retrieve some grossy microchip he keeps hidden on his body. All I can say is, rude much? want to ditch Terrence, find Jerry, and save Dean, we're gonna need a plan. Not gonna be much of a planning sesh with that mega loser Terry watching our every move. The only name calling should be from Jerry right before his demise. So, ladies, please, 
Less ruminating, more eliminating, or old Terence will begin the process of elimination with your chum, Dean. Please help me. <gasps> Looks like our planning session is officially trashed. Speaking of trash, come on. Uh... Wait, where are you going? Terence doesn't like surprises. Measures. Now let's figure out how to get Terrence off our backs. If only we had a useful gadget instead of these lame hologram lockets. Then we could <gasps> bust a move. Maybe they're not so lame. I could try and rig them to project our images so Terry will think we're on a search and destroy mission for Jerry. But really, we'll sneak off and search for Jerry and tell him it's really up with Terry. Exactly. Uh, run that by me again. It's the old bait and switch, Alex. And FYI, it's brilliant. In that case, I say we go for it. Three hologram diversions coming right up. Clover, Alex, and Sam meet Clover, Alex, and Sam. Oh, check it out. I'm even hotter as a hologram. I wish I could say the same. What's wrong, Sammy? Me. I'm so blah. Please. Since when do you care about looks? Since right now. I am a total plain Jane. This really isn't the time for discovering vanity, Sam. We need to interrupt Terrence's regularly scheduled programming. Remember? Yeah, and I've got an idea. facility training for your promotion. If you took time out for shopping, rest assured you'll be fired. Ugh, fine by us, because so far our big promotion has been nothing but a big fat fiasco. Extra wit. Jerry, something's gone wrong. That training facility turned into a torture facility and they've got Dean trapped in a lucite cell. And that whacked out house Terrence, who was supposed to be taking care of us, wants us to take care of you. And by take care, he means eliminate. Terrence, I don't believe it. I take it you know this dude? Let's just say he's a person from my past. Well, this person from your past wants you presently gone. And he wants us to get some microchip from you. Oh my, this is serious. I suggest we go to my home office at once. <laughs> the mess, ladies, uh, but I wasn't expecting company. Cassette tapes? Neon? Wow, Jared, this place is like a total 80s museum. Uh... <gasps> Jeez, Jer, for such a teched out guy at work, you really live in the past at home. Speaking of the past, who's the other kid in this picture? That is my twin brother. What? Hello? Secretive much? 
Yeah, since when do you have a twin? Duh, since birth, even I know that one. Okay, girls, time to focus. We've got business at hand. Our only hope is to trick Terrence into believing I really did perish by staging an elaborate and convincing attack on me. An attack which will require masterful acting performances by each of you. Cool. A cushioned whooping? Blah, blah, blah. Enough chit chat. Move it or Terrence will lose it! This plan rocks! Totally! Only won't the part where we pretend to knock you off the bridge really knock you off the bridge? I will have a bungee cable discreetly connected to my ankle. As for the hidden microchip Terrence requested. Ew! Oh, gross! I'll replace the real microchip with a decoy. Like so. Okay, ew. What's the deal with that thing anyway? There'll be plenty of time for explanations later. I hope. Uh, Just be sure to rip off the birthmark during the chase. Lucky me. And give Terence the decoy chip when you head back to the training facility. When will we see you again? I'll join you at the facility, where we will defeat Terence and save Dean. Worst for us, dear. Let's go, spies. Not without gadgets, you don't. about a stocked fringe. Molecule separating hairspray. Perfect. I could use a change in hairstyle. I wouldn't place that near your head. It'll change more than your hairstyle. A not-so-joyful joy buzzer. How ironic. Sonar Sally with antenna drill. Cool. No, oh, I mean, ouch. <laughs> Better antenna down before putting it in my pocket. And for me, a laser ascot pin. And, of course, X-powders. I always keep spares at home. Yes. Now I can try some new not-so-plain-Jane looks. Well, you look like a couch. No! Agreed. Now let's go before Terence discovers your little trick. I see that trick. They're trying to drive Terence crazy. Perhaps you'll move if I eliminate your dear friend, Dean. Oh, healthy, in fact. To just roll out of bed and relax into the day. Goodbye, ugly hollow spies. Hello, real spies. Come on, girls. Let's do this. That got their attention. What a perfect day for a leisurely stroll. I've seen fake moles, but fake birthmarks? Alex, what is the meaning of this? For you, big trouble. Pardon me? Sorry, Jer, but I've got no choice. I'm taking this microchip, and I'm taking you out. And I don't mean for sushi. Alex, you can't do this. I wish I couldn't, but yeah, I can. <laughs> then so can I. Pretty good for an old guy, but pretty good isn't good enough. Well... Sorry, Teach, but school's out. Not until I say so. <laughs> okay. Class dismissed.
and eliminate Jerry. That makes Terence very angry. Trust me, you wouldn't like Terence when he's very angry. After him, spies! You were trained better than this! Terry, I wouldn't. 
Good choice, chosen one. Did I mention the Dean is actually a double agent? No way. Impossible. More like way possible. Turns out it's more fun to work on the evil side than the good side. And to think I actually thought you were cool. FYI, double agents, doubly uncool. Oh, don't blame Dean. He couldn't resist helping me infiltrate the spy droid project. <laughs> and this chip is the key that will finally get us in. Whatever! Like we care about your dumb droid project. You will when you see how deliciously evil it is. Sorry, pal. We're not impressed by evil. Then why did you hang around that conniving, backstabbing Jerry all these years? Don't you talk about Jerry like that! He was the best! Totally! And he so didn't deserve to go out like Silence! that! Silence! Your Jerry got exactly what he deserved. My biggest regret is not being there in person to see his suffering myself. My second biggest regret is having to get rid of such exemplary agents like yourselves. Um, two regrets is a lot for one day. Maybe you should hold off on the get rid of us plan till later? It would be such a shame to lose spies with such style and pizzazz. Especially you, Sam. What, really? You don't think I'm a plain Jane? Duh. With that wild devilish red hair? Hardly. Thanks. And ew! Oh, you won't be thanking Terence for what he's about to do to you. Back in the virtual ballroom. Not good. Very not good. This room spells doom. Come on, guys. Just because last time we were here, the walls caved in, doesn't mean it's over for us, <laughs> does it? Goodbye, girls. As hard as it is to believe, I am sorry it had to end like this. That makes one of us. Unhappy landings! 